All right, welcome to another episode of the Coaches Show for the coaches and by the coaches. Today we have a special guest with the S. Uh, guys representing D.C. Premier Chris Douglas and Charles Basin. And also we have uh, Sugar Ray, a.k.a. February Ray, Raymond Brewer, representing the TTO. And also Oz Van Gore representing Team Durant. How you guys doing today? Hey, man, I appreciate y'all, man, for having us on, man. I appreciate you. Definitely, man. definitely. Good to see you all. Glad to see y'all all in good health. Yeah, everybody's safe, man. I see y'all. Some of y'all are cheating, too. Some of y'all went to the barbershop. You know, you ain't supposed to be <laughs> <laughs> All right. So today, fellas, what we did, the coaches already prepared their pregame speeches, and we're going to uh, have some questions for you guys, man, and uh, just, just hoping that you guys can get out the word and what we think. We ask the questions that we think that the people should know. Is that cool with everybody? Yes, sir. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, that's good. All right, so I'm going to pass the rock over to Coach John Kamara, Parkville High School. What's going on, coaches? What's going on? How y'all doing? How y'all doing? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. What's up, oh, John? Bye. What's up, guys? I just want to make sure we all know we had um, Shalop on as well. He represented the district. Um, so today, man, the idea, the, day, the idea was to get you guys on, man, um, to just pay homage to all the programs in the DMV area that we feel as though are really doing a great job um, to highlight you coaches, um, younger, you know, next generation coaches. You know, some of you guys have been doing it for a long time. I personally want to say I, I look up to all you guys. Some of you guys are the same age as me, but, you know, even when I first started coaching, you guys putting a lot of work on the AAU side. Some of you guys high school as well. You guys are doing an excellent job, and we just wanted to take out the time to make sure we – let you guys know that we appreciate what you guys are doing for these kids. And, you know, it's the time that the high school coaches also connect with AAU coaches as well. And I just wanted to say thank you guys, and we appreciate you guys for uh, coming on. So, um, appreciate you. Um, first question is, you know, no particular order. How do y'all want to go? We just want to – you guys introduce you introduce yourselves to the people. Um, tell us about yourself. Tell us about your coaching background and tell us about your AAU programs. So whatever order y'all want to go in, just tell us briefly about yourself, coaching, and your AAU program. Uh, I go first. Uh, I'll see my name is uh, Chris Douglas, uh, coach with DC Premier. A little bit about myself, man. You know, started coaching straight out of college, 23 years old. Uh, Got a job down at St. Mary's College in Maryland with Coach Chris Harney, Division III. Um, learned a lot, man. Learned a lot from him three years. Also was there with my guy Chuck. Uh, when I say, man, it's one of the hardest working coaches I've ever been around. It's crazy, man. He, he taught me so much. Uh, recruiting, how to do stuff, you know, without money. You know, Division III, you ain't going to get scholarships, man. He, he had us on the road 24-7. Um, obviously, after that, I went to Spalding. Assistant there with uh, Coach Nick Jones, who coached at St. John's, and uh, leaving there now. Now I'm at Riverdale Baptist with Coach Travis Lyons, who's one of the toughest coaches I've been with. Man, he's doing a hell of a job at Riverdale right now. Um, connected with everyone, um, and obviously I'm with DC Premier. Um, this will be my fifth year with DC Premier. Um, uh, I, I appreciate them for giving me the opportunity. I was a little young when I took over that seventh grade team. Um, very good program, man. Sending out college players every year. Uh, really ran well by um, Damon Handen, also Moose. Um, just appreciate those guys. It's been a great program. We do a good job getting these guys into school, uh, making sure that we get these guys college coaches. We got a great youth program going on right now. 
Um, just, yeah, that's basically a little bit about that. You know, I'm going to turn it over to Chuck. He give you more about the D.C. Premier and what, you know, what we we doing over there as well. Uh, all right. Uh, thanks, Chris. Uh, my name is Chuck Basin. Um, been coaching probably about probably like eight, nine years. I started my senior year of college uh, when I tore my Achilles. Um, I went down to New York, started coaching with PSA. So always a shout out to Munch who uh, really put me on. Um, I came back down here, uh, got into the college coaching game with my boy uh, Chris Douglas. I was at St. Mary's with um, Chris Harney for three years, and I will just mirror everything he, he's saying. That was just a grind, you know, trying to get players uh, on financial aid to go to a school that's, that cost $40,000 a year. That was hard to try to recruit. So uh, it, it actually ended up uh, being, being somewhat pretty fun at the end. Um, then I got into it with the Blue Devils with Keith Williams. I really appreciate that. He gave me the 15 under squad. And then I came over here to Premier. I've been with Premier now um, about three, three, four years. Um, came over to Premier j just really because I wanted to do more than coaching. I wanted to do, um, I wanted to really get into the admin side. So just a big shout out to Damon and, uh, and Moose for allowing me to assist them, you know, really doing the day to day. And I'm just happy in the direction that our program is going right now. Like I said, we have a pretty good youth division. Um, we added the girls that's being ran by Lonnie Herrera, Gina Wilson. I think they're doing a tremendous job. Um, so, yeah, I just, hey, man, Premier, we're, we're looking good right now. So, um, that's it. Uh, I'll go next um, since I'm, like, one of the younger coaches. Um, straight out of college, I went to Morgan State University. Um, straight out of college, I worked uh, with DMV Elite. And I got a different background because I studied film and production. So I was able to capture the area in high school sports, um, trying to show love to the Prince George's, you know, the, the public schools at first. Um, did a lot of grassroots and with, with the public schools, the 4A, 3A, 2A, 1A. Showed some love to WCAC, but I felt like the public schools probably needed more to love. Then while I was doing the DMV Elite thing, I was coaching at Ernest Jess Middle School straight out of college uh, with Ron Burks and Ron Burks Sr. And I give him a lot of respect for that. Um, Two years into coaching middle, I mean, a year into coaching middle school, I realized that I had a, you know, a passion for coaching in general. So I did another year at Charles Carroll Middle School, which was great too. Willie Saunders, who's the assistant coach at Charles Flowers, uh, had me coach under him. Then I decided to take the leap of faith and do the next level, which was high school, which was Bowie High School. And, um, you know, Coach Walter Booth and Cedric Holbrook gave me the opportunity. I learned a lot in those two years. Uh, I learned, you know, the great things about coaching. I learned the bad things about coaching at that type of level. You know, I see coaches like Coach Brewer and Coach Oz. I seen them do it for a while, and they've been in the community. So I try to take a little bit of everybody's style, but have my own general style too. And then after that, uh, second year, well, our first year with Bowie High School, we had uh, we had an interesting dynamic where we created the district basketball club, and. That was uh, pretty dope because the reason we created the district basketball club was to give kids a different outlet. Everybody couldn't make the D.C. premieres, the team takeovers, the team to rant. So those kids needed new uh, avenues to go to to have a platform. And this is about to be, well, unfortunately, the coronavirus happened, but we were going to our sixth year. Uh, this year, I, was, I started off, I was an assistant all five years. One thing about coaching is I feel like you got to know your role and continue to grow and progress because I feel like it's too many young coaches. We try to take the lead, but it's like a, it's a wealth of knowledge in the DMV area. And like said, knowing Coach Cromer, knowing Coach Chuck, knowing, Bruce, knowing all of y'all, you know what I'm saying? Even hooping in the open gyms with y'all and hearing y'all, you know, feedbacks and, uh, you know, analysis. Um, I had another head start where I worked with the Washington Wizards. So I got to see like it from the NBA side and the, the pro aspect. But this year, I was actually going to coach the 17 or under team, and I was excited about that opportunity. But, you know, COVID-19 hit. Uh, that was kind of tough. But outside of coaching at um, – um, outside of coaching at, with the district basketball club, I don't coach in the PG4 no more. I coach at WCAC, which was just St. Mary's Riken. And, you know, that's been a challenge. I won't lie, but it's been a blessing to, you know what I'm saying, building something from the ground up and trying to change the culture. And then with AAU – you have DC Premier, you got team takeover, you got team to run, you got the sponsorship teams. And our lane is trying to be that new source for those, you know, mid-level kids. And we try to be like the, we call ourselves the butler of the, the hoop groups. Like college coaches know to see us when they come to those hoop group events that we try to line them up like how team takeover and team Durant does. And we've been blessed over the last five years to send over 40 plus kids to college, 20 plus division one. And we finally had a two A ten school. So we just, 
following the motto, uh, Cam Brown and Kyle Rose were our two A-10 players last year. And out of the six players we graduated last year to go Division One, um, five of them played significant minutes, three of them start, and one was going to, but he got injured during the year. What's going on, fellas? Uh, Ray Brewer, uh, former player out of the area, went to Eleanor Roosevelt High School, uh, was first team all met, all league, first team all um, PG County, was fortunate enough to play in the uh, main game, Capital Classic. Um, here on this radio, it's a, little, it's a little touching for me because, like, a lot of y'all more, I consider, you know, more than friends, it's kind of like a family thing. Like, even just, you know, looking at Chris Douglas, go back to his time when he was playing with Glenn Arden and I'm playing against his older brother, and I just watch him as a young and just knowing Chuck, uh, Chuck from Premier, from PSA College, from Scan, just when we was young, really not knowing what was going on. And Coach Oz, I mean, like, really coaching me. And, you know, I could, I could vividly remember his first moment. I felt like he got a good chance to coach was when Ferrello left us. And he had to step up and to kind of see him now in a position of running the organization and watching the O after I tore my ACLs, my two ACLs, I came back and I kind of shadow boxed at Bladensburg High School on the coaching level, which people really didn't know. You know, I had O there, Bruce, Bruce Shingler, which is my cousin in uh, South Carolina. My dad, the late great Coach Butler, you know, made recipes in. So, and I was able to kind of become a coach in that stint, sitting behind the bench, watching the John Kamar, watching the Gerald Williams, and, and playing with like good guys like Lape. So for me, it's 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 a beautiful picture right now to be here. And, and you know, I know a lot of people don't know my story. I was committed to Kansas State. I, I mean, where I committed to Manhattan first, didn't didn't make it through the clearinghouse. Uh, end up going to prep school, committed to Kansas State, so my ACL, end up going to uh, Miami Dade after that, come back 100% of my first one. Three months later, I blow my second right, I blow the, I blow the next one out. So it kind of just put me back home. I get back home, and like I said, I came into a, you know, I wanted to, I wanted to stay in the game. And I had so much to give, you know, to, and, and so long story short, I, 10 years, I've been coaching now for 10 years. And again, I started with takeover with, with, with Keith Stevens, who had me in the eighth grade at Newport. You know, so my ties run deep there. And then, you know, them ties continue even with Coach Oz to where, you know, I was with Coach Oz from Roosevelt to Newport. I mean, from Roosevelt to takeover, you know, kind of get the, for, for him to kind of get going. And now I've been, you know, like I said, I've been coaching for 10 years now, um, all with takeover. Um, been seventh grade head coach for the last five years, uh, 16 under for four years and 17s for the last, I want to say, no, I did 16s, three years and 17 since then. Um, again, we've been for, I, I'm, I'm blessed to be coming from a rich, I come from a rich basketball piece when you're talking about playing for DC Assault. Curtis Malone, playing for Eleanor Roosevelt, Oz, Ferrello, and then being a part of Team Takeover. You know, so it's – and Takeover been fortunate to be where they at because we – all us guys come from rich – from rich backgrounds. So we was able to establish that program and understand what it took to get to a level of, of people considering us one of the best programs in the, in the country. You know what I mean? And, and – and I tell people all the time, like, I actually thank and happy to see Coach Oz took that step. You know what I mean? People always, man, well, when Durant come with us, how is it going to affect me personally? I don't think it's going to affect us. It's only going to help us. Because reality is we need it more. You know, Premier, you know, Premier, like, we need it more because we are, we are one area that can say we can go and take four different circuit teams and go win wherever we go. It was a proof in the putting the like, last two years, us premiered, like we won all the circuits. Everybody, like the whole area won, won the circuit. So 
the circus was in DC, was in the DMV, every shoe company, it was home. So I think it just speaks a lot of, and it's just, you know, I'm, I'm definitely happy to see all of us in this next life of, of, a, of a position. You know what I mean? Because I can physically say I've watched all of us. I've seen all of us at a point where if you just was a me player, Coach Will, Coach Chuck, Coach O, them dudes was coaches. All y'all was coaches. So for me, John, Lape, and all of us, we in y'all shoes when we was players and y'all was coaches. So now we are those guys that's trying to come up the chain and, and, and trying to, you know, one day maybe run an organization and be the directors and whatnot. And it's just, you know, it's, to me, it's a beautiful thing, you know, to, you know, to kind of see us here at this point. And, and I'm just blessed to be able to share my knowledge and, and, and continue to learn and just grow, man. And overall, for the, for the overall programs, I think all of us are doing a great job because people lose the, people lose the, 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 the common goal. And the common goal of this thing is to help these kids get to college. You know what I mean? And we're not, not – one program is not fortunate enough to carry 600 bad kids, really, really good kids. Off, you know what I mean? I, so we have to find a way to, to break this thing down and, 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 add it, and let it add back up when we finish and say, look, look at the kids from the DMV area, man. You know what I mean? Like these dudes going high major. These dudes going mid major. They going to college. And, and they able to – and they able to – they're able to represent the area in the right way because it's, it's right people like us, guys and the older people that's doing it the right way. Now, I think it fell off some, but here we are. Here this group, here this generation of coaches and young coaches, we know what it takes. You know what I mean? We know what it, we know where it comes from. And again, man, I'm just, I'm just blessed to be, you know, on here to, to, to share, to help, help, help share. Man, Ray, that was that was great, man. I mean, it, it's funny. It did bring back some memories, man. Um, Coach Oz Bangor, um, director of Team Durant. Um, I've been coaching since I got back home, uh, 2003, 2002. And like, like Ray was saying, man, it was one of those things where, um, you know, got a chance to go to school, play ball, Division Three, Virginia Wesleyan, show my Achilles. Uh, but then coming back home, it was just like, how can I give back? Um, to these kids, what can I do? And uh, my brother, cousins, everybody that went through Roosevelt. And so got the opportunity with Glenn, build that relationship. And then was able to kind of help out, you know, from Ray, Lape, Brendan, B-Mac, um, you name it, man. So these guys kind of embraced me, young guy coming in, uh, but they was hungry. So I started there in Roosevelt 2003, um, went through that, and then 2008 ended up um, – going with Glenn at uh, part of six. Went to part of six a couple of years, won some uh, championships there, was able to build that program up. Um, and I think one thing through that transition, like Ray was saying, man, I think it was for us kind of giving back, man. I think we're in this, in this game to give back. We've seen guys come before us, um, lead this game. So it's only right we, we give back, we go and show love, show support. And that's what these guys were doing. So after that, um, my guy would take over um, and, you know, with Keith and guys that were there, Kenny Johnson, guys that I watched that have done it for a long time, just kind of, you know, sat back, watch, observe, try to get better, you know, better my craft, um, got involved, program, you know, Keith was doing a phenomenal job there, just bought guys that wanted, that, that was hungry, obviously. So after that point, uh, with, you know, with part of six, um, ended up leaving actually, because I had the opportunity to go overseas uh, the coach Libya national team in 2009 for like a, a five month staying for the African national um, for the Af African national championships. Um, when they were Kevin Nickerberry, who was at Howard, he's at um, Kevin is at LSU right now. So um, I thought it was an opportunity. I mean, I left my job. I walked out my job, said, you know what? Doing this six months just to get that experience would take me further on because this is what I want to kind of do. So I was able to do that. I was able to travel to Libya, Morocco, Tunisia, Turkey, um, watch pro. My brother was on that team. Lamar Butler was on that team. So they had a couple of pro guys playing against guys like Tony Skin, the Nigerian team. John Lucas actually coached the Nigerian team. Then I picked his brain. And I'll tell y'all something, fellas. One thing he told me, I caught him in the lobby one day, man. I said, uh, Coach, man, you've been doing this for a while, man. What is one advice you'll give a young coach? And what he told me was, he said, never be their friend. And I was young, and I didn't know what he was talking about. He was like, man, Coach, listen. He said, you know, you can support them. 
You know, he said, but the moment they think you guys are equal, they'll walk all over you. They'll never respect you. Don't be their friend. Tell them what, don't tell them what they want to hear. Tell them what they need to hear. So I took that with me and it just kind of resonates. So we did that, fell short of the goal we had. And then um, at one point when I got back, wanted to go back to Paul the Six, but then Nickelberry got the job at, uh, got the job at Howard. He was like, man, listen, Oz, you know, you got, you understand the playbook, you know what we was doing. Do you want to come to Howard? I'm just like, damn, like, you know, it was kind of surprising, but I was like, you know what, I'll do it. So I went on volunteer basis. I got my nine to five job back, uh, but I did a volunteer, didn't get paid, didn't do anything. I just wanted to learn. I wanted to soak the knowledge up. And Nick, you know, we are folks that know Nick Berry. I mean, great guy. We know he has his ways, um, but one thing about him, hell of a recruiter, you know, can recruit. So I wanted to just kind of pick his brain, be around. So I did that for two years. Me, Travis Lyon was on our staff, Keith Couture, um, Ant uh, Antoine Gages was on that staff as well. So great guys, great minds, guys that played. So again, picking picking guys' brains um, to just get better, just soak up all this knowledge. So after the two years, man, one thing changed my mind for the college level, man, was we sat there one day. I think we went to play Purdue, man. We obviously, paid game. They gave us about 80000 you know, got the brakes beat out of us. But um, what changed my mind, they, one of the kids we recruited didn't play well. And I remember going into the office and um, coach mentioned, hey, we got to get another kid. So pretty much we was over recruiting this kid. So I felt some type of way about that because I'm like, man, you go sit in the living room, you talk, you build relationships. And then in a, in a, in a blink of an eye, somebody else is coming to take their spot. How do you go and explain this to the parents? So that kind of rubbed me wrong. And I remember having a conversation with, with Travis about this, man. I was just like, man, you know what, man, I don't know if I can do this. Because for me, it's all about, you know, it's about relationships, especially in this business, man. Like, if I could tell you anything, it's about relationships, man. We, the circle is too small. We know each other. And and one thing I would say, and, and Ray kind of hit on this, every last one of you guys that are on here, I've watched you, I've seen you, you know, we've talked, I've gotten to know some guys better, but it's all respect for all you uh, the programs that you guys are building. Uh, this area is absolutely rich of talent. We all just got to do what we can to help each other. Obviously, it's competition. We're going to compete. You know what I'm saying? But the relationships is what's important because that's how you're going to take the next step, in my opinion. So long story short, didn't like it. I said, I'm coming back. So I had a conversation with Glenn, came back part of six, and I think we won in 2014, um, had a hell of a team. So took that route, took that route. And, and at that point, I've moved around, fellas. I was just like, man, you know what? I want to do something different. I want to, I want to kind of get my own team, spoke to Keith about that, and gave me the opportunity to have a second team. But I still felt like there was more I needed to do. So, you know, just made a decision that I wanted to just step away from high school for a year and then take an opportunity with Durant. So that's kind of how this thing came about, fellas. So I stepped away and kind of leap of faith, man, just see that journey. And here we are, obviously, Wayne Pratt, who's Kevin's dad, gave me the opportunity. Um, actually, Kingston Price introduced me to him. Um, and then Roger Gerby, obviously. And then the rest pretty much was history, man. Just kind of took all what I learned along the way and just kind of implemented what worked, what didn't work. And I still spoke to guys I had a relationship with, had questions. And one thing Ray did hit on, it is, man, like a lot of people look at it like, man, you know, I don't know if I do that. Like we all can do it, fellas. Like we all have our individual path, but you you guys, if this is what you want to do, you got to jump out there. If it's something you really, really want to do. Because at the end of the day, we have jobs, we got things we want to do, but this is the passion. So that's what I did. I just jumped out on faith, man. This, this will be year four for us. We've done a hell of a job and obviously having the premieres, takeovers, districts. And Loppy, by no means, bro, don't sit here and be like, the district is just second fiddle. You guys have done a phenomenal job, man. You know what I'm saying? And and not not all of us can get all the kids. We can't get them, you know? So we try to get what we can and work with those kids. And I think it's a lot of great teachers on here. And that's what we should do. So, fellas, really, that's that's like my story where I'm at right now. Um, It's never easy work, but... I think stay, you know, stay prayed up, man. Just believe in yourself, man. And just have good people around you, man. If you do that, I think we're able to do what we're doing. And I do. I absolutely love the job everybody's doing. I look at all you guys, obviously, as, Lord, you know, Lord Brothers, the guys, obviously, with Ray Loppy. I mean, our relationship go way back. For the panel as well, you know, John, um, Lop, you know, John, Chuck, uh, you know, Maynard, all you guys that are on here, man, you know, so. Much respect to you guys, man. And that's pretty much my story. 
Man, man, I appreciate it. I thought I was just throwing an introduction question, but man, that was that was so knowledgeable, man. I like, appreciate you guys. Like uh I was, like you just said, it's about relationships. I think this is all built on relationships and we just saying how far we're coming in that area. And like what Ray said, like what Ray said, this is just this is beautiful, you know, this is beautiful, man. Like, you know, so I don't, I'm I'm just glad I'm gonna be able to sit back and learn from you guys really quick. So I'm gonna go ahead and not hold y'all and um Pass it to Coach O. Ladensburg High School. Yeah, appreciate that, Coach John, man. Uh, so we're going to get right into the next question. It's kind of like a quiz, it's kinda like a book, but I'm going to pair y'all up. All right? So what I want, I want TTO and DC Premier, y'all pair it up. And then I want uh, Team Durant and uh, the district paired up. The question is, I want you guys to explain each other's circuit. How well do you know the circuit, and what do you see it being? Do you want to go first? Uh, District, you can go first. Go ahead. You go ahead. Oh, all right. So Durant, Durant is the same circuit as Takeover, the Nike EYBL. So I'm a, I'm a defend, I'm a defend our program. I said we the Butlers. <laughs> I didn't see Butler go to the national championship, so we done. We didn't we didn't beat a couple of shoe circuit teams. We just try to like know our niche in our lane though. But we did the Adidas Gauntlet like in 2017 and made it to the Elite Eight and beat um Garrison Brooks, who plays in North Carolina. Uh we, we done ran through a whole rocket circuit teams, but like I said, biggest thing is we just know our lane. But um the Nike EYBL circuit, uh it's, it's loaded. It's loaded. You got pros every single night. And when I say pros, I'm talking about NBA guys, uh high majors in the ACC, Big Ten. Uh, SEC, the the top six every night. Um, it's funny. I just I just saw like I was just talking to um, one of the former EYBL coaches who now coaching college, and it was like, and he coaches at a mid major. He was like, man, the mid major is cool, but I seen all of this talent in the EYBL, and I've been blessed enough to see the EYBL circuits a couple of times because you try to like see how everything is going. So I call the EYBL elite. I mean, every night you might be playing against a five star. I mean. Every night you're playing against a four or five star. Um, the coaching is the coaching is really good at the EYB. I think I think that's one thing the circuits get uh, represented wrong that the coaching is is kind of basic. But now the coaching is very good in the EYBL circuit. I tell you that. Um, so you take over in the rant. They send out about ten Division ones every year, and that goes for a lot of that goes for. I'm not gonna say a lot of the teams, but most of the teams send out a lot of college players and. I mean, you look at the NBA, they they get like 10 first round picks each year over the last five to six years that I know about. So the UIBL, I think that joint is the, no offense to DC Premier, I think that, that joint is the best circuit. And the Under Armour is right behind it. So yeah, the UIBL is the real deal. It's the WCAC uh, circuits. All right, so um, I, you know, for when you guys played in the in the gauntlet, I'll, I'll speak more on that from what I know. Um, obviously, it kind of follows the same um, format, and you guys can correct me because I'm I'm not too knowledgeable about it. But um, as I do see in terms of um, different sites that you guys play in, um, also ran as a league, um, you have to qualify, and then you guys kind of have your finale. Uh, one thing I would say. And I think it's kind of what we're talking about. Um, I agree. I think it's kind of easy for us to say UIBL. I do. I think the UIBL is it is on a, on another level, but never discrediting uh, other circuits as well because not every program across the country can play in the UIBL. I mean, they might not want to play in the UIBL. You know what I'm saying? And I think if you're able to be sponsored, no matter what circuit it is. I mean, it's all good because, again, what's the end goal is to get these kids in college. So from the gauntlet, I mean, it's, it's, it's the same. I mean, I think formats, I mean, Nike does it with Adidas and UA. They try to figure out what we all can do. But they try to mirror each other. Um, EYBL tend to have more talent. Um, but, but, but talent is talent. I believe if you can play, um, then obviously you, you'll be seen. But from what I know, I think, you know, they follow the same format in terms of different cities they go and play in. Um, records, are, you know, records are kept, and then it's a finale where you decide who the best team is. But I've heard a lot of great things about it as well. But you know, for us, I think we're so locked in in our individual circuit, man. Like we don't think about anything else because we got to worry about the next team we're gonna play. 
like DC Pamir and take over? It's on. Go on, Chris, or you want me to go? Go ahead, Ray. You go first. My, I mean, honestly, yo, this is a good one because Chuck, Chuck for real, for real can answer this one because he been, he been fortunate enough to be on both sides of it. Mm -hmm. But, 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 but I mean, honestly, um, I mean, I, I think it's, I mean, I think honestly, EYBL will get, you know, a big thing because I would say from a top to bottom as a whole, it's, 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 it's more competition. But when you look at the Under Armour circuit, I mean, the last few years, Premier, uh, 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 New Heights, um, uh, what's the team in Philly? Uh, with, with Trayvon Duval. Uh, uh, we are one. We are one. we are one. I mean, like, you talking about the last three, four years, that coach has been winning the Under Armour. So, like, I, I personally look at, like, certain, like, the premieres. The, those, I look at them as, I would say, the Yukons and Cincinnati's that just end up leaving the high major conference at the end of the day. The premieres, the, them dudes got history and, and, and just, you know, players that speaks for, that, 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 that can come play on that at that EYBL. I mean, the Twins did it. Jay did it. A lot of them dudes that came over and played with Melo and, and was pretty much the better players at them sessions when they when they came over there. So I just think from a top to bottom, you know, the EYBL is really, really, really good. You know, and the way I would say to me, from what I know from Under Armour, um, it's a top heavy. They top heavy. And I can't even speak on Adidas because I, I, I don't know. I, I haven't seen it at all. So I, I can't speak on that at all. You want to go ahead, Chuck? Chuck, you, you ain't seen both sides, Chuck. Yeah, I'll go ahead. Um, you know, of course, I love my circuit, love the UA circuit. Um, just fortunate enough being in this DMV area and uh, really being one of the – well, we are the only UA team from uh, – besides Thurman, Baltimore, our next competition isn't, isn't until Charlotte with uh, Team Curry. So, um, you know, just being fortunate enough, you know, we're the, we have the most wins on the Undama circuit, um, tied for the most championships on the, on the UA circuit. So, you know. I really love my circuit, but but Ray is right. I can't really speak on this EYBL. Uh, I'm not gonna lie, ain't nothing like Peace Jam. I, I do love Peace Jam. <laughs> EYBL circuit is definitely a uh, uh, how can I put it? Overall, overall great circuit. I mean, you got a lot of pros coming out there, a lot of first round picks. We're not even talking about a lot of guys who are just like instant impact players when they get to uh, the Division One schools. Um, you'll see a lot of times on EYBL teams, some dudes might be all met, some dudes might be all league, and they don't get in the game. So uh, that's that's all I can really uh, really say about the EYBL. Um, heard what else? And just being here, fortunate, we're fortunate. We have two EYBL programs here. I mean, there's other cities like New York has it, but that should just show you the competition, man. Just think about the people that you had play on Durant this past summer with you know Ace Baldwin and um, Earl, and they would take over, you know, with T. Will and the crew, Hunter, um, you got Lil Doug, my man, Trevor Kills. Uh, it's, a lot, it's a lot of competition over there. It's a lot of competition. Some of my favorite games were watching maybe like Takeover and, and, and Boo Williams or Takeover and the players. Um, mm -hmm. And I, like, I'm, Durant is new. They just got the seven teams, but I can't wait, can't wait to see what rivalries they build up because that's, that program is coming too. They, they coming, they, they coming, they, they here. So, um, so that's really all I got to say about the EYBL. All right, appreciate that, man. That's some good insight. I knew, I knew it'd be one of those questions, but one thing I do know about you all that's on here, y'all, y'all know what's around you. So that's the biggest thing, and knowing that there's competition, you know. And we talked about this the other day. Matter of fact, when we talked about compassion being and being competitive at the same time, you can be competitive and still have love and compassion for one another, you know, because we, we all come from the same, the same area, man. We all know each other, and it's a small world like I said earlier. So I thank y'all for that insight. So I'm going to pass you over to Coach Des Wade over at Blake High School. What's going on, fellas? Appreciate you guys being on the show. Um, anyone can answer this question, and I know this is a combo that can go on all day, but uh, just kind of tone it down just a little bit. Um, but what is the biggest misconception of AAU coaches 
and your program in general? Uh, I'll just answer this first. I, I think the biggest misconception with AAU is that people think that we're not here for the kids. Like, we don't care. Like, AAU gets the bad rap. Like, oh, we just – we'll get you from one tournament. We'll go get another kid for another tournament. I've seen TakeOver. I've seen Durant. And what I tried to marry, because I wasn't this dude to begin. I want a new player every weekend. Everybody knows me. When I was young, I was a little hot-headed. But I watched Oz. Like, Oz really – you know, he added pieces, but he kept his core. I, I, watched, I watched TakeOver. They kept their core, and I always appreciated that. You know, like, they really cared about the kid. Um, even when they, go, to, when they go, to, go off to college, how they come back. You know, we're fortunate enough we're having that tour premiere, but to see that when you've seen Durant or see that when you've seen TakeOver, it just shows that, that level of compassion y'all were just talking about. Like, we really do care about the kids. So, that's it. I, I, I'll say I'll go next, man. I think the biggest conception, like <laughs> Chuck just kind of hit on the nail, man. Uh, but I'll add on to that. I think is it's no coaching that goes on at AAU. You know what I'm saying? We just roll the ball out and the kids play. Like it's so far from the truth, man, because again, you having elite kids within your program, you got to coach them up. You know what I'm saying? Like you just can't roll the ball and think, you know, magically they're going to, you know, know how to do certain things. And we try to emulate or at least add on to what they're going to take back to their high school coaches, you know what I'm saying? We just don't want to kind of wing it along the way. So I would say that's the biggest miscon uh, misconception that's out there. And I say in terms of our program is we're battling against other AAU programs like the Takeovers or Premier. Like we know these guys, you know what I'm saying? Like we have no issues, personal issues. It's competition. We all want to win. We all want to get the best kids. But I think we're real with ourselves to say, we're all, and Ray said it earlier, we're not going to get all the best kids. But what we want to do is we all know these kids. We all know the schools and stuff they go to. So we we have to do a better job of kind of eliminate that perception out there that we're, we're battling like, oh, we hate each other. We want to go outside and fight. Nah, it ain't none of that, man. It's, it's all love. It's passion. But we are. We're passionate about our program. We want our program to succeed. So those are the two things I would say um, uh, from me. Um, I, I would say, uh, on oh. our behalf, I mean, for all of the, everybody is, uh, development, teaching, coaching. Um, I feel like coaching is on a high level when it comes to AAU, especially in this area. I know a lot of, uh, teams take, uh, their practices serious, their development serious, running, running plays, X's and O's, drawing up things, you know what I'm saying? Having strategies. I know, uh, it's been a weird time since we don't have AAU because of this COVID-19, but, a lot of it is like extended families, like DC Premier. I've been fortunate enough to coach kids uh, who've been on the DC Premier program. That's all they rave about is the AAU and the family aspects. I've been fortunate enough to coach kids on the takeover program. And all they rave, rave about is the family aspects and like TTO, like they take that with pride. Same thing with Durant. And we find, we, you know, we find ourselves doing the same thing with the district basketball club. We still got our players from, our first class to our last class, comp com competing against each other, which team was the best team and having like real responsibilities. Um, so you know, I, I tend to see more of the kids coming back to their AAU coaches before their high school coaches because it just gave them a different outlet, seeing the competition, traveling, different things of that nature. So I know it's a lot of like pride for the kids playing for their Pacific AAU programs especially for the, the four programs we have on here. I know a lot of kids take pride wearing that Premier and that Under Armour across their chest, wearing that Nike across their chest, and wearing what we got across our chest and just represent the whole DMV area. Appreciate it, Ray. You go ahead and get in there. Yeah, well, I think – I think – I, and I'm I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm gonna take our back as a whole on this when you say you know the we're not under that misconception of, of of AAU basketball because we know our area know what it takes to help these kids and get right, but because we're in a hole as an AAU we're we're under that microscope. I go to a lot of tournaments, man, all the time, and hear so and so many other programs come to me and ask, like, man, how do how do y'all how's y'all area so good. How's y'all area so well coached? Like all our AAU programs, when we go out, we're well coached. We're well, we're well prepared. So we don't, as the DMV, I will stand on that. Don't go under that as bad, you know, a mis 
misunderstood of the AAU game. We're actually, we are one area that's actually saving this, this AAU thing. And that's why them other programs on the road, they asking us what's going on because they losing kids every day. Somebody using somebody for this and then they going to another team. And no, you know, no shake Chuck, no. Chuck and been in New York and then been in the fire with he had a kid Man. that he he had a kid that he had to bring to this area just so he can so people could care and, and, and see the kid through. You know what I mean? Just see the kid through because it was people up where he was at was just taking the kid and doing what they wanted to him. You know what I mean? Then he came here and the kid found a home, found an AU program, he found a high school, and he and he went on with his life. You know what I mean? So for that piece, I'm gonna stand on it for us. We we not under that. And we need to continue to keep doing what we're doing, fellas. So it go as deep as these other programs in these other cities and states. We can make that impact on them so they can change. And it'll just make it even – it'll make everything even that much better when, when, when we can feel like we always competing in our backyard, keep competing in our backyard. If we can go out and compete against it, it makes it that much more fun now. That's the problem in this build up. It seems like we always looking at us fighting each other, fighting each other when again, we feel like we did something, but we still got the same crab in the crab in the world mindset. Cause we trying to not let the next man go up from our area when it is what it is here. So we come from this thing. So we need to continue just to continue to not be under that light of is is misconstrued. But we gotta keep working at it. And far as for us, you know, I think, you know. Been on it, and Oz didn't been there. You know, at one point it was we only send people to one school, and I ain't gonna lie to get it off the ground. Yes, we did do it, and Oz was part of it. Shit, we was. That's what it was. You know what I mean? But like I said, now you look at this thing, man. Them kids go to school all over the area, man. It ain't no just specific one here, one there. When you look, man, you talking about like I said, just in the WC alone, it's four, it's four to five kids or three that play with each other on the AU team. So this thing is really is 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 really spread it out all over, you know what I mean? And not and like you know, and that's a misconception that we get. And you know, like I said early on when PBI first came in the WCAC, you yeah, I stand on it. Yeah, had to, had to do something to get it going, you know. And everybody got their different strategies of a way to get things going, you know what I mean? But if it's in a respectable, manable way, man, people respect that, you know. So that's that's I think that's a big big piece on us as far as what people say we only if you go there you're gonna go to one certain school you know what i mean and this and like i say look at the you know look at the numbers look you know the math they had four gonzaga was coming out with they started five and four days was at gonzaga you know what mm-hmm. i mean reality is it's the fits Man, half of these kids can't even play for glenn <laughs> ours know that and it's and it's not a knock on the kid but it's just the same way when you go on the car, it's the same way when we doing AAU. Everybody can't play for ours. Everybody can't play for Chris. Everybody can't. It ain't. It don't mean that we're bad coaches or the kid not that good. It's 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 about finding what's the right what's the right what's right for you. And when it's right for you, then you go succeed, and that coach gonna go push you, and you go to college, and everybody and everybody win, and we back in the cycle all over again. Good Man, stuff, Chris. Yeah, I just want to piggyback on what everybody's saying, man. Like, my biggest thing, man, this thing, AAU, this thing, it's, 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 it's more than basketball, man. When I got players texting me, like, Coach, I love you, man. We're going to get through this COVID-19. Through, like, that mean a lot to a coach, man. So, all that, you know, we don't care about play, Man, that ain't true. And to piggyback what Ray said, man, we go out of town, and Ray know this, man, Coach with Coach Maynard has been the biggest – that's been the biggest blessing of my life right there, man. Everybody know Coach Maynard been doing this for – Chuck know been doing this for a long time, man. Just getting knowledge from this guy. We go out of town, man. They go up to Coach Maynard and say, man, man, I don't know how y'all doing at DMV, man. Y'all got them boys playing hard. Oh, co- I can't even talk to my players, man. So, like what Ray said, man, we, man, they respect this area, man. When we go out of town, man, they – they, hey, man, y'all – they well. Y'all running out play. Y'all doing this. So, man, like that coaching thing, man, just being – then to have been a uh, blessed staff with John and Dez with me now, man, just coaching plays a big part of this thing, man. So, you know, everybody had good points, man. I just want to put that – more than basketball, this AAU thing, man. It's a family, man. No, nah, and I think that's that's huge. I mean, just listening to all you guys, it comes back to, like I said, building those relationships and, and then maintaining those relationships 
once they leave your programs. And, and I, I see you guys from some closer, but uh, from afar as well. You guys are doing an excellent job, man. I appreciate you guys. Um, I'm going to pass it over to Coach Will. What's up, fellas? Um, it's good, man. It's, it's one thing, one thing I'm gonna, I'll say to you guys is, uh, even though, you know, I don't be seeing you guys out there all the time, I don't coach AAU. I really do think it's a brotherhood out there. I mean, I've been at events where I've seen all you guys there, and, and you guys are always showing love to everybody and stuff like that. So, you know what I mean? I salute you guys because, like you guys said, man, the big misconception for what, you know, we hear as high school coaches is that, you know, AAU coaches don't get along and it's just beef and stuff like that. But just seeing all you guys out there on the circuit, man, you guys set a great example for kids, man. It's good. You know, I'm, I'm one of them coaches that are thankful that, you know, my kids – do play AAU because, you know, especially if they can get enough to play for programs like you guys, because I know they're going to be well coached and they're going to come back to me playing the game the right way. So I salute you guys. I think you guys are very underappreciated in, in my eyes. And you guys aren't just, you know what I mean, guys that's trying to make something off kids. Like you guys said, a lot of you guys care about kids. I, I, I've been in Chavez and seen Ray working out five kids. You know what I'm saying? When he could be doing better things than that. So I salute all you guys. You know what I mean? Um, so my question to you guys is, how do you guys feel about shoe circuits not playing each other? Because I know, especially, you know, a couple of years ago, you know what I mean, with all these successful programs in the area, a lot of people would love to see, you know what I mean, a Nike team play Adidas, you know, you know, take over, play Premier, or Durant play the District, or New World, stuff like that. How do you feel about that? Do you like the way how I separated by shoe companies, or would you rather be, you know what, let's get the best programs out of each league and let's book it? Legend, the legend himself. Well, I I'll, come, I'll go well, first, well, man. I, 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 I come, go ahead. Go well, ahead. I come from that. Go I, ahead, come right, from that I come from that era, Will. You yeah. know what I'm saying? I come from the era where we went to Kingswood Classic, bro, and it was. Yeah. I'm playing with the soul. It's Georgia Stars, Lou Will. It's Monte Ellis Reebok. It's, you know what I mean? It's, it's Greg Oden. Like, at least, like I say, during them times, it was at least. That Kingswood Classic was the one event that everybody lived up to because that was the event that you knew it was, regardless of shoe company, come on down. So yeah. even now, even me now, Will, and I think everybody will agree with this, the, mm -hmm. fact, that we, the fact that we do have a format, they should now do one out of out of league, out of league. Um, everybody come on and, and let's boogie down, because you still got your league. Like with this league, I think it does a good job of controlling all a million basketball games. Yeah, be playing just to be playing. So I respect the league, but we can do bring back a pit jam fest and make that thing and make that thing a, a all a, all you can anybody come in and play. You know, yeah. all you I believe all we need is one. You know what I mean? And, and that'll bring that that little bit more grit back to look, man. We get the touch, comp the magic. You know what I'm saying? We get the touch, a uh, 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 red, uh, you know what I mean? I don't, whoever. You know what I mean? You just get the, like, you get that feel to be able to be in there like a, a mini tournament. You know what I mean? You get the rumble. So I, 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 the fact that I come from that earth, I truly would love to see it come back. And with the format that they do have, I think outside of that format, they should all come and say, look, let's make one event, a live event, and all shoe companies play. Yeah, because it's about the kids. <laughs> that's right. what they want. Go ahead, that's what they want. Yeah, 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 Coach. Nah, and, and I'll piggyback right off one, I mean, of uh, Ray, because that, that's how it is. You're talking about guys just all thinking alike, man, about this. How it is. I mean, Will, you know, Chuck, you know, all you guys know on here, man. That's 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 how we came up. Like you play, you want to play against the best, and, and I think it does need to happen. I think, if anything, you look at what's happening now. If even if they don't have to P, uh, Peace Jam or the major event, they had one weekend. Like Ray said, just throw it out there, let everybody hoop. And I don't really think it's us coaches. I think we want it. You know what I'm saying? I think we want it, but you know it's higher ups that are higher than us that ultimately got to make that. But I think what? <laughs> I think <laughs> right. I, I I think I think I think at the end of the day. We were all one, and I think at some point we probably will get together and say, man, let's, let's just do something. Because it is. I mean, for the competitive standpoint of it, man, we got to take it back to how it used to be. So I agree. I, I would love to do it. You know what I'm saying? Uh, definitely. 
I definitely want to bring this back. I mean, some of the best AAU memories I had was Bob Gibbons, uh, uh, Morgan, Morgantown Jam Fest. Remember that, fellas? Or Rumble in the Bronx, like everybody playing each other. Charlie Wells. I, I miss that, man. I, I really do wish that, you know, Nike, Adidas, and all, you know, like I said, Ray said, you know, it's above our heads. But I just wish, like, one weekend after Peach Jam, we just all, you know, just rumble really quick. Send us to one city, send us to Dallas, send us to Vegas. Do it over the East Coast, you know, right here in Atlanta. Do it in D.C., right there to St. James, and we just bump. Because I know all coaches, we want to bump each other. Yeah. We definitely want to. All right, so uh, some of the best matches I've seen over the last couple of years, we get, we got a different perspective. We go against everybody because we're not a shoe affiliated team or circuit, but we got the opportunity to go up against everybody. Even with uh, Will, with one of your players, um, Curtis Howland, uh-huh. just committed to Townsend. We was in Vegas two years ago, and we got to go up against Emmanuel Quickly and his uh, team, BBC team. And that weekend, a lot of players, a lot of players on our side made a lot of money. Scholarship wise, because we had the opportunity. I mean, even uh, two years ago in Orlando, when we went to Orlando, I saw Coach Chris's team. We all played against a uh, team family. And Orlando, yeah. uh, it was really bumping. Oz, you played against Premier and like the Elite Eight or something like that. Y'all was really bumping. So I feel like she, Ray and them did it against uh, against Compton Magic. Those be the best games because nobody has nothing to lose and it's just bringing the area and the competitiveness together. So I feel if we can bring that back. After Peace Jam, during uh, during Peace uh, uh, Jam Fest, I mean, it's, it's a win-win for us. Last year we uh, did the Pit Jam Fest and we made it to the Final Four, and we had to go through the shoe circuit teams, and it, our kids got a lot of money because of that. But every game was intense. But if you do it with the bigger brands, oh man, like the money, the venue money would be crazy because everybody's there to watch it. I'm gonna be honest, we could have our own here with just our team. Yeah, yeah, honest. exactly. Yeah, you, go exactly. to Jam Fest, you go to Pitt Jam Fest, you see DMV teams up in there. I'm like, all these teams over Pittsburgh, they could have had this at St. James. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Now, I, I, I agree with everybody. Like like he said, my best games was when I played Nike teams. It, I feel like kids, when they play Nike under Adidas, they take it more personal. And it's fun. Mm-hmm. My, my <laughs> best games, and, 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 and uh, Dez and John, I tell you, when we played uh, the Expressions last year at St. James. In the, in the championship, you know, went down to – they beat us at the buzz off at half court. You know, you, you, them memories, man. Like, you just play against the family. We went to four overtime against the family, man. That, that's, that's memories, man. So, yeah, I agree, man. We, we can do it. Let's, let's, let's do it, man. Hey, hey, Chris, that was a hell of a game, man. I was front row on that one. I was like, man, this ain't going to happen. I don't want it then. You know what I'm saying? Oh, hey, it was it a was tough one, man. Game. Yeah, yeah. A hell of a game. <laughs> Well, I appreciate you guys answering the question, man. I'm, and I'm going to pass it on to the next coach. Hey, hey, Ray, they worked out in Vegas, though. I was at that game. Compton Magic and uh, TakeOver. Oh, my God. Oh, <laughs> my God. Hey, 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 I wish we wouldn't have took it. We, it was three. Dino wasn't going to let you win. He wasn't going to let you win, man. <laughs> and, like, and, like and, and just to speak a little bit back on that, on that one-time event, I, wouldn't, I would say not do it at the Peace Jam and all them because all them kids die out after that. Yeah. Do it in the middle. Do it in the middle. Do it in the middle when, you know what I mean, when everybody's still <laughs> still playing. Because one thing, them kids, all them kids, no matter what circuit, when they go to Vegas, we know what it is. They they going to play, but they chilling. <laughs> I know ours. And ours, know after peace game, them young is shutting it down. So you really can't do it after, no, after that event like that. We got to do it in the middle of that, you know, when that right before it's about to go to that, to that dead person. That's when I do. Oh. Uh, I yeah. appreciate that. I'm sorry. What's up, what's, what's up fellas? Uh, uh, Coach Dodger Small Watch in Venice. Um, I know all you guys. Y'all my guys. Uh, uh, my question was, um, obviously, during COVID-19, I'm heavily affected by my recruiting. Um, but this question is for, like, being that, you know, we missing our first open period um, in April from an AAU standpoint and a college standpoint where you can't come out and recruit kids. And there's some kids that, that may not, you know, have that opportunity to show their talent and they, and they planned on doing this yet. What are you guys personally doing as coaches? And what are you guys is doing? What are you guys are doing as programs to help the 2020 and the 2021 kids uh, get some type of 
uh, you know, college recruitment going? Uh, shit, the biggest. Oh, who's going? Uh, the biggest thing we're doing is just My network. Bad. I mean, uh, Coach I said it, that network. So we're using all our resources with the college coaches that we do know. And we, and um, I went to, I mean, another coach said it, Coach Ox uh, said it. What we do, when we when we reach out to college coaches, we try to reach out to levels that they can really play at and be successful in the styles too. So we're not reaching out to like the University of Maryland or anything like that because we know most of our kids ain't on that level. So we try to, for us, we break down every film that we have for our 2021 team. And even we did it on our IG, like we tell kids the Sam film who was going to try out for the team. And if we like him, we try to just promote those kids, you know what I'm saying, to a certain schools. So but when it comes to the Division Three level, to the, the NIA level, to Division Two, Division One, we try to put them in a certain, you know, atmosphere and see what coaches like. So if we got a 6'4 wing, and he can really score the ball. We try to look at programs that fit his style. We don't try to, like, sell him too high. So for each player, we have been reaching out to, like, six to eight college coaches, you know, having some of them bite. And then, you know, God willing, if we do have a summer session, we, they can see him in the summertime. But at least they got their eyes on him in the fall time where they can at least come out so that that goes to that AAU high school thing. We, they can at least come out to their high school programs, but we're giving them the first initial – you know, say like, all right, this kid can really play, and we got a relationship, so they're not, they are trusting our words and things of that nature. Um, to speak on what Lape is saying, and I think I know all of us will. The big, the, the first thing we are doing there is as 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 with the college coaches again, our relationships. You know what I mean? Like we didn't build these things for years, so the COVID don't stop us getting on the phone like this. The, you know, it don't stop us calling, FaceTime, and those, you know, so we're like we're daily on the on the phone line, and I mean, again, if I'm not mistaken, I think as a whole, pro all the programs, our 2020s are saying, yeah. So again, the area man is different, you know what I mean? So like, we not fighting like a lot of other people are fighting around here. Our kids going to school because between them going to the right fit, we know what's right was, you know what I mean? Yeah, look, let's get it done. Don't waste no time. Don't don't strangle people well out. You know what I mean? Because here's a problem. Somebody might have strangled out, and now look what happens if this if this this situation happened. Now that kid's short in the old situation. Now we got to go do more work, and that's the and that's the work nobody talk about when they when they talking about what kind of work are we putting in. We as coaches putting in more work than what people think, and and not just for our kids. Like we done for myself. But I've been on the phone the last few days for a kid that played with Durant, Chase Davis. I've been talking to men major schools for him. You know, so so this thing, and again, our area, our relationships, our, our, our thing hold weight. We hold weight. So those coaches that's on them levels, they respect us like we on their level. Because we're dealing with the better, we're dealing with the best talent. So, and they, and they respect what we are telling them in. Who do you, and they know what they're getting because of the rich tradition that they coming from. So again, you know, it's constantly using your your relationships, talking every day, all day. Because now, and all the guys that we know, they was where we was at before they even got there. So the relationship started there. You know what I mean? And, and far as the kids, and far as the kids, you know what I mean? You just it's, again talking to them, making sure they're in the gym, making sure they're getting road work for the ones that's you know home. You know, just constantly. I, and I, I told somebody, I thought this for the kids, I thought this was one of the best things that could happen because I felt like they missing the foundation of how to go do it themselves, of how to go be self-motivated, of how to go figure out, how to go pick up the deck of cards and flip it. Keep talking about I need the weight room. No, you don't. It's, it's a lot of stuff in this house that they can do that we that we knew how to do and learn how to do. So I I always, I'm always finding the positive out of a negative because it's always one or more than one. You know what I mean? So this thing right here helped us slow down as a, as an area because we was moving fast, you know, getting out of our lines and going behind guys' backs and all this. And we going behind backs of relationships that was before basketball. So this thing right here, yeah, it might have affected us, but, man, I think on the grand scheme of in the whole, in the end, this thing helped us, man, because we wouldn't have did this, fellas. 
we wouldn't have, we wouldn't have really sat down and had this this round table talk. You know what I'm saying? And this and again, and it's beautiful because a, a, a thing like that has has brought us back together. You know what I mean? And sometimes it's not even purposely that we moving away. Sometimes you just don't know because you're so stuck in the grind that you know you you kind of losing yourself. But as a whole, days man, you know, constantly relationships and and talking, communicating. You know what I mean? This is this is a time where you gotta you know communicate and talk and just constantly work, 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 and you know that's all I can say on that piece. Hey man, Ray, I should have I should have stayed off, man. I should have stayed off, man, because you know what I'm saying. I, I, I don't know how to come back on that, but <laughs> spot on, man. 2020, and I think you guys know, man. We 2020 guys are pretty much, I think, set. But I think um, with this, it is, man. And I was just telling somebody the other day. I think we've always talked about having that week vacation because we're working so much, we're moving so fast. Now this is really kind of reinventing, like kind of having us take that step back to kind of rethink life and things we do all over again right now for the kids. It is, man, keeping in contact because now we keep talking about basketball and Ray hit it on the nail. When y'all think these are you guys are not working, this is where we're a little different because we're constantly reaching out to these guys. The ball is not even bouncing. So we texting them, we Zoom calling them, making sure we sending them workouts, making sure they staying active because one thing about this game is if everything opens back up, you're not ready. We can tell who's been working, who's been doing push-ups, who's been getting shots. Even though you can't go out, but you can do other things to prepare yourself when it's time to play. And then with college coach, the same thing. You have those relationships. They call and you making contact. Mm -hmm. and, and honestly, I feel bad. It's a 21 class you kind of feel bad for. You know, 22, 23, they'll be fine. But 21, these are, this is that moment where these guys are looking for that big summer to get that momentum going into their senior year. You know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. for them, coaches have seen them play high school gotten things, but now they really want to go see them against four or five other league guys on the floor at the same time. So definitely praying that we get, you know, something going so they'll have that opportunity to just kind of show the coaches how they expand the game. But it's constant communication, man, just making sure they're doing what they're supposed to, even though we can't monitor them every single minute of the day. But all we can do is give the information. Now they got to put that work on their own. Because if you don't, we'll be able to tell. So I think the more you communicate, the more you let them know, the more you're putting calls out for them, it just kind of keeps them engaged because typically that's what we're on. But I think all, all in all, man, I think this stuff was supposed to happen. It's just having us kind of relook at our lives as a whole to see what's important to us, what we need to cut off, what we need to keep moving forward. And then now learn how to adjust because life is about adjusting. I mean, us coaches, we've been in a fire where you're down 20, right? We're not going to put our head down. We got to you know, buckle up and say, all right, how do we come back? It's one point at a time, one stop at a time. You know what I'm saying? So it's the same way. Uh, yeah, it's the piggyback on you guys. Um, right now, we're really just burning up the phones, man, trying to call as many coaches as we can. Like like uh, Oz and Ray said, our 2020s are, are mostly done. I think we might have one more to uh, really sign. Um, I know just going through the recruitment with like a, a Darius Miles, for example. Like he didn't have a chance to really go out to the to the school, so he had to take virtual visit, virtual official visits, and you know you really just don't get that same, you know that same feeling. I mean, of course he loved Nate Oates and, and loved Alabama, um, but it's it's still not the same as actually really going to the school and really seeing the facilities and seeing the programs. And and my heart goes out to these twenty twenty one guys because they were sort of affected from last year. I mean, last year we had two live periods. Like, you know, we just had, what, one in April, one in July, and now and now we're coming up to a new year. You know, we, they added a live period. They're going to have to go in April not playing. You know, hopefully, like I said, maybe we can salvage the summer some, somewhat, you know, get one tournament, two tournaments in, maybe do a Charlie Weber style, you know, make live period in September like it used to be, you know. So, um, so yeah, and also, too, just checking in with the kids, Zoom, Instagram, Facebook. I mean, FaceTime, Facebook, whatever we got to do to make sure they're still working. Because, like, just to piggyback off Oz, we're going to know. We're going to know if you are working. We, we, coaches are working. We're, we're always finding new workouts. Always, like like Ray said, the cards, man. Like, do the push-ups, 52 push-ups, you know, things of that nature. You can still get that working without physically going to the gym. So it's really, it's really proving out, like, who really wants it, you know? So that's, that's really what we're doing over here.
Uh, yeah, Foz, uh, you know, I mostly work with the 2022s, but uh, Foz, my guys, man, we all in the group chat. I got all my guys, we all in the Nike app together, running app. So we 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 challenge each other, right? See who got most the more most miles in one month right now. So like Chuck said, man, we just I'm telling y'all just keep working. We always be constantly talking in the group chat. Uh me and Chuck constantly send these videos out to colleges and, and coaches just trying to get these kids looked at as far as you know as like they can. But like you said, we know we're working, man. So, you know, we we we'll see, you know, when we salvage this thing, we're gonna get through it. Like I tell the players, man, just keep the faith, man. Pray. Pray. Pray is, pray is very powerful, man. So, you know, we, we working though, man. So that's that's about it, Dad. My baby, you want to add or? Uh, hey, 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 Dez, I'm sorry. Yeah, go ahead. Right. Yeah. Hey, Dez, one thing I do want to say, and that's for all of us, man. I know y'all know how important it is. One thing to keep in mind is let's all do it. And, and as we, we, we learn different things, I love sharing stuff. I would say let's make sure we're watching our players' social media, man, because, you know, these college coaches got nothing but time right now. And we, yes. we got these kids liking and tweeting and stuff that's irrelevant. Y'all know what it is already. So, you know, if, if we haven't been doing it, let's all do it. And that's what the high school coaches as well, man. It's just something that we know can get a kid scratched off a list real fast. And when kids yes. are bored, they get their hands involved in, in crazy things. Yeah. I'm going uh, to touch, touch on that. I'm going to touch on just my, my process and what I'm doing as, as an assistant coach. Um, on that end, so other guys can kind of get my perspective on it. But uh, go ahead, Lobby. Nah, I mean everything they said was pretty much it. Only other thing I probably we've probably done differently. I know I have um, with my groups or the kids. You know, our kids. Um, I try to send them film of like old school ball, of, like back in the day, like in the late nineties, two thousands, two thousand twenty. Because uh, I mean, I, y'all have the social media. Y'all, y'all know Quinn had that IG live. Even Ray got called out, and you know what I'm saying? And everybody had to, like, put out their resumes and things of that nature. And that's one thing the kids are missing is they don't – they're not – a lot of the main students of the game, you know what I'm saying? Um, they like to live live by the moment. So a lot of things, that, you know, we're trying to do – try to send them, like, from our DMV area, like players from back in the day, but also, like, clips that we, like, grew up on. I remember – uh, recently, sent him the uh, Sebastian Telfair clip through the fire. We all watched through the fire, and he got that ankle injury against Darius Washington. I know a lot of kids nowadays would probably say, "I'm done for the rest of the game," but he kept going and pushing through, and had that little moment with his with his older brother. Like, what's his why and why he's doing this? And he was ranked the number one point guard in the country, so there was no reason for him to come back. So, trying to teach him toughness, you know, what I'm saying all of this is mental toughness that we're going through right now. But when we do go back on the court, it's going to be some tough moments where. I know for a fact, we probably might be down by a little bit. We might be up, but I'm not having a good game. And there's a lot of college coaches coming to watch. Like, what's the purpose? Are you going to fight and push through, or are you just going to give up and quit? So, Coach uh, Douglas said, praying through these times, but just trying to teach all of these kids toughness and a lot of, you know, being inspired by heart and enthusiasm, because that's the biggest thing. Uh, that's one of the biggest things I've learned from coaching. A lot of it does is what we call it skill versus will. A lot of it is will over and then developing that skill too, you know what I'm saying? A lot of kids are skilled, but they need to develop mental will, you know what I'm saying, as well as physical. Uh, I appreciate everybody sharing their perspective. I'll just share my perspective. Uh, I get assignments every day. Um, I get my, my, my Twitter, my Instagram. I'm getting flooded with footage and tapes of kids from all over the place. Uh, one of the first initial things, like I said, we do check everything on social media. If your social media open, I'm checking what you posting, what you tagged in, um, checking your tweets. Um, I had an assignment today to look up uh, at a kid that's in the JUCO in Cali. And I had to search where he was at, what's the stats, what he doing, looking at the v- video footage. And we doing, we got to do even more homework on kids now because we can't physically get out and see them in person and shake their hand or really get the watch them through tough times during game moments. Everybody going to put highlight clips of their best shots and their best dunks together. And um, and we also rely on relationships. So I'm just, you know, 
even though you might like what you see on the game, I'm calling somebody that might know somebody that's at that Bible school that's seen him play that might be able to give me more intel about tough moments or uh, uh, how the kid is going to react on certain. Could he take coaching when you was watching this and, and when y'all scouted him, what did y'all say? Uh, how did y'all feel about him? So all of those things do come into account now uh, when you recruit. And so if I could say from my standpoint, even at the NAI level, so I know if we're doing it at the NAI level, I know they're doing it um, for the guys who get paid big money to do that because, you know, their jobs are on the line when they when they offer that scholarship because one kid can change a program. So um, that would be my perspective, but I appreciate you guys sharing um, your perspective on what, you, what you're doing to assist the kids. Um, and I'm gonna pass the question to the next the next coach. All right, thank you so much, Coach Small, man. A lot of information being given. We all, but we both, we both middle of the third quarter right now, fellas. We almost where we need to be. <laughs> My next question, I'm gonna throw it at Shalape only. Shalape, I want to ask you a question as a public school, high school coach like myself. I, I want to ask you how, what can high school coaches do? to kind of bridge that gap between you all's AAU programs, not just you all, just AAU programs in general uh, of communication, transparency, and so on. You said uh, through transparency, I mean, I'm kind of old school. Just talking, um, like talking to us and saying what you want your players to work on and things of that nature or saying if you have a player, because you said public school, so um, Coach Jennifer, uh, like if you have a player, just talking to us about them and like what's your expectations for your players to going back into uh, your high school season. Coach Man, I know when you had uh, uh, Curtis Holland on our team, that was, you were very transparent with him and like some of the things you were looking for. And you told us some of his weaknesses mentally early. So that was the easy transition into saying, okay, we got Curtis now, but when he goes back into his school in the fall and winter time, we want him to be a dog, like a, a, a killer. You know what I'm saying? Because he's going through that AAU gauntlet. He's going through those tougher practices because one thing we do know about AAU, you're compiling the best kids in the area. So when you compile the best kids in the area, even if they ain't getting the playing time that you're expecting or they're not starting, they should come back into that area looking to dominate. You know what I'm saying? And I feel like that's the biggest thing. I know over the last years, we've had a relationship with public school programs. Um, I tried to get a couple of your players, Coach L, uh, over the years, but they went on to play for like circuit teams. You know what I'm saying? Like I remember Daniel Oladipo, year one, we was we was gunning for him, but you know he went on to play with a circuit team. And he, now he's at University of Oakland, Sherwin. He went to go ahead and play with Takeover, and then he you know went out his senior year. He went to go play somewhere else, but. The biggest thing is we try to create those relationships so we can be a feeder to some of these programs. So when their kids do come back to their public schools, they're looking to dominate. Um, I mean, I call, I honestly call that 2019 Eleanor Roosevelt team, a district team, because we took the players of such as Isaiah Gross, uh, Cameron Browns of the world, and we had the opportunity to develop them for three years. So when they came, when they came back to public school, they saw a lot of competition so the public school level wasn't, you know, as fast. It became, it started to become slower to them. You know what I'm saying? That's our biggest development is like the key is the development. And I feel like Curtis had the same maturation process. When he came to us as a junior and started getting them scholarship offers, I felt like the league play started getting slow for him. So I guess just communication, like staying on the phone, you know, talking to each other in public, um, just letting, know, letting us know like the goals and aspirations. You know what I'm saying? That's the biggest thing. Another misconception with AAU is I feel like some public schools, not saying y'all, but I think some public schools are scared to send their kids to certain AAU programs because they feel like they're not going to come back to their schools. But with communications and things like that, man, we could make it, I'm not saying a partner, it is a partnership at the end of the day, but we had that partnership of, all right, um, let's just say Curtis, I'm just keep, or let's just say Daniel, uh, or let's just say that little point guard. I like that little point guard you had this year uh, with the left hand. I went to watch that game against um, Springbrook. He did a lot of impressive things. And say we had him, we would come back to you and say, all right, this is the things we want to work on with him. So when he comes back to Bladensburg, and we try to do this a lot, just challenge our kids to dominate or be better for their specific high school programs.
Yeah, you're absolutely right with that. You know, when a question, you know, because we ask the people, you ask the question that the people should know. So for me, communication is key. So yeah, I tell my kids about AAU, the rule is if your AAU coach can't call me, he ain't coaching. And it's not because out of respect. It's just because, Coach, I like your kid. We're going to work on X, Y, and Z. Can you work on these things too? You know what I mean? So when that kid comes back, he's fine-tuning his, his toolbox. You know, that's the biggest thing for me. So when we have that communication piece and when coaches understand and get on the same page, you know, because coaches understand this, but sometimes we forget how small the DMV is and how much our kids talk. You know, and then that's when that communication piece becomes it becomes tampered, and kids start to lose focus. And then that's when you see the kids that might be disrespecting a coach or talking bad about another program and on the Instagram and stuff like that. So definitely, man, communication is key. I appreciate that answer, Shalop. So I'm gonna pass the ball over to my man, Coach Jennifer Tobias Jennifer, over at Honeytown High School. <laughs> I appreciate that, Coach O. Um, you know, I've just been sitting back listening and uh, just soaking in all this knowledge from all you guys. Um, <clears throat> some some I know a little bit more than others, you know. So I've been far as we're, we're Coach Basin and, um, you know, Lape, I've, I've got to know him over the last couple of years and then even being with TakeOver the last few years and got to watch Ray from a, from a distance. So I appreciate all you guys. Um, definitely respect you guys a, a tremendous amount, um, especially what you've all been able to accomplish um, given your platforms. So uh, my question is, <clears throat> I'm, a, I'm a public school head coach, and um, you know we've seen uh, the AAU landscape change over the last few years, especially with the rise or the rise in popularity of the new high school live period. Um, and we've even seen some kids decide to skip AAU altogether um, because they're playing, you know, uh, summer league at Demathil, and even that live period now. Um, so what are your thoughts? on this new live period? And um, do you think we'll see more kids decide uh, to take that route and skip AAU altogether? Um, I, I'll go first if y'all don't mind. Um, I mean, live period, I think any, any opportunity um, for kids to have, you know, a chance to be seen by college coaches is good. Now, I don't know, I definitely don't think kids are going to skip AAU all together. I mean, AAU is a little different, man. I think it kind of go hand to hand. But remember, as a college coach, and, and Coach Bills probably can speak on that, and even a time like the, the two years I was at Howard, when you think about it, during the high school year, depending on what high school you are, what league you're playing in, competition varies. You're, you kind of go out to go search some comp, non-conference games and things like that. Now, think about with AAU, no matter what circuit you want to get, Nike, Adidas, UA, whatever the case may be, every tournament you pretty much go into, you're playing against elite competition. You know what I'm saying? Like, you're going to have two, three guys because as, as an AAU coach, you want to try to go, you know, play in the best tournaments. So that competition there, you want to be a part of it. Like, you want to expand your game. You want to see what the, the best players they talk about. You want to see how... You, you know, you match up against them. You know what I'm saying? Now, even in the high school live period, you still play with your high school. You're still most likely playing against – some teams might might not even have all these big players. You know what I'm saying? So I, I think last year you saw a variety of – I think it was the end of the last live period in July. I remember when a lot of coaches was talking about, man, a lot of the major kids didn't even show up in these live periods because they've already finished their major circuit game. Peach Jam was over. UA was over. You know, um, Adidas the gala was over. So it's like you didn't even get the elite kids. You kind of got the next level kids attending a lot of these camps. You know what I'm saying? So I think AAU kind of gives that boost because you are playing against more competition on a constant basis. You know what I'm saying? So I don't see that going away at all. I honest, I'm going to be honest with you. I think personally, if we're not careful, and again, I might be going out on a limb like this, AAU at some point might replace high school, might, might put it in, in a situation where you might at some point have AAU throughout the year. You know what I'm saying? For some people, because if you look at what's happening, one and done, the G League, look what they're starting to do now, right? So with these guys, that's where they get that rush, playing in that circuit, playing that summer, you know what I'm saying? Being out there traveling, that's where they get that rush. 
Um, and then obviously that momentum takes him to high school. But that's just my personal opinion. Not nobody telling me that. I just think that's not going to go away. If anything, it might start changing a bit where that might actually take over a bit more. Uh, I agree. Um, high school live prayer is good. I, any exposure for kids, you love. You know what I mean? You, you, you ask me. But Father and you, I, do, I don't think kids are going to stop. Um, my thing is, more basketball, I mean, traveling. You with your friend, Like, it's just not going to – you get to travel. I get to go to Vegas with my guys. Now, I, I just don't think that's going to happen. And like Coach said, man, you want to – that air you think so competitive, man. You want to play against the best at all times, man. Playing on that, that live prayer in front of 70 coaches, you 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 know what I'm saying? You, you, you get the – you get that feel. So, you know, it's going to be tough. But, now nah, I just – in my opinion, I just don't think – I think kids are – Actually, some kids lean more on AAU, actually, you know what I mean? But, uh, like I said, like I said, the lot of high school out prayer, we love it, though. Any exposure a kid can get, especially the kids that don't get to get, be seen at AAU, you know, that, that college school can see. Well, I didn't even know that guy played with Premier. I didn't know he played with Takeover. He goes to this. So, any exposure we get for kids, we love it. Like I said, it's all about the kids and the scholarship and what they can get. Even, like, the smaller schools that get to see now this kid at high school, you know, it's always good, but – Father AU, nah, uh, in my opinion, I just don't think kids are going to – think they're going to keep that AU thing rolling, man. Yo, you hear me? Y'all hear me? Yeah. All right. For me to speak on that, you know, again, I come from the era where I was getting – now, I wasn't playing the same talent night in, night out at the Rock League, but when we talk about college coaches there – I seen the same amount of college coaches at the Rock League that I seen in, in, in on the road with assault. So I'm and I'm I'm saying that because it can be possibly done without taking nothing away. You see, what I'm saying again, this is the DMV area. We that 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 right there is a whole microscope thing. Like, like that's a whole. You know, what I'm saying I don't think we go under that because of our rich tradition. They're going to come here. The problem has been we haven't had a solid summer league, high school summer league in so long. At one point, it was the Rock League. Like, so it wasn't, nobody was complaining about if it wasn't enough high school summer leagues for exposure at one point. You see what I'm saying? So at one point, everybody in the country, Delonte West, Eddie, them dudes didn't play AAU basketball. Them dudes played Rock League and Roosevelt. That's it. And they, and they, and hoop group and that type of stuff. So it's, it's, it's a it's a it's a space for it to work, and it's a space for nobody have to knock nobody out. You just gotta hit home on and say, look, we gotta come home and say, look, if we gonna have two really good summer leagues, or one high school, like all that's the like everybody got summer leagues. So instead of hot, for if we really want that exposure, bring it under one or two roofs, from a high school standpoint, two summer leagues. Like Gwen Park, matter of fact, it was Gwen Park and Rock League. We used to drive us, oh, Des, you all know this, because we blade roads. We used to drive from Gwen Park to Rock, or take five and go to the Rock, six to go to the Gwen Park, or you know, different back, whatever on side the Beltway. So, for again, for us, our area, man, we different, man. Our area, it can be done. We don't have to substitute anything. We don't have to subtract anything. We have to, again, come back together, use our, use our connections that we all got ties to in this area and say, look, man, we're going to do A and B, two summer leagues. We want them, we want the joint sanction, and you go from there. And now everybody, everybody can play. Everybody's going to get the exposure. You can't tell me them, them, them coaches not going to come to DeMatha if, if we got a summer league with everybody there from the area. But it's about us. It's about us, and we got to work it out. But the problem is, when it comes to those type of things, everybody want to be the forefront of it. When the forefront of the thing is to making sure these kids get the exposure. So, I, I mean, for me to speak on, I come from that where I don't, I, I seen the summer league high schools don't affect AAU, and AAU don't affect the high school summer leagues. And that was when the coaches didn't have relationships with the AAU coaches. You talking about when it was just co AAU coaches just carried it. Come here, you, you ain't going it this way. But it, it, it never affected it because it was a respectable 
it, at, at that point, it was respectable. Like, it was already understood. Like, it's Buck. Roosevelt playing Demathe today. It's Buck. You know what I'm saying? Gwen Park playing Gonzaga. It's Buck. So, those Blade playing Demathe. Like, all these schools got their opportunities at one point. I just think we have to do a better job of saying, look, let's get two summer leagues, two really good – find two uh, gyms, have two really good summer leagues, and you go from there. Ban the Brick was one. Oh, back then, not ours, y'all was playing in that. Ban the Brick at St. Albans. Mind you, these was, these was eight high school summer league that kids was getting ultimate exposure at. On top of playing with their assaults, playing with their skies the limits, playing with, playing with all them too. So I think we just have to, we just have to dummy down the, the, the amount of, of high school summer leagues. You know what I mean? We got to dummy that down and make and make them and make everybody come under two roofs. The coaches are going to come here. That's not, we're not, because we've done our job with the talent. We've done our job of developing the talent and, and making this thing a really hot big. So we in control. Make them only come to two spots. That's, I mean, that's how I feel. But if, if not, it's going to always look like somebody's not getting enough look because reality, these college coaches can't come into DMV and make it to four high schools in a day. It's, it's just hard. Definitely you're talking about playing a summer league basketball game with running clock and all that. Like, we got we to gotta minimize it. Shit, even demand it. He can use them two gyms. <laughs> and, and you just bump. Like, you know what I'm saying? You bump, and, and I think, I think that would be a format. But I don't think neither one, and I'm going to leave on this, I just don't think neither one have to be substitute. And like all saying, 2022, bro, they coming back out of high school. <laughs> they come back out of high school. So some kids might say, hell with high school. I'm going to just play AAU and then I'm going to get ready in the winter because I'm going to put my name in the draft. And that's nothing AAU can stop or high school can stop because now that's the NBA saying we're going to make that change. The NBA is trying to push AAU out, but eventually it's going to be all NBA. They trying to make this thing a whole. They trying to make that junior NBA, and again, I'm glad I was able to get go to go. You know what I'm saying? And they said they're trying to make that junior NBA like the lower league world search. Like they're trying to really just take it to a a level to where because they because they're coming back out of high school, they have these NBA people right there. They they're gonna be able to monitor. They're gonna be able to monitor it. You know what I mean? Like my ambassador was um. My ambassador was Vince Carter. Like, I'm, my kids going everywhere with him. We, so, like, they're trying to get it to that point where – and it's and it's, it's because they're trying to make a revenue for these NBA guys that's retired. So, now it's another lane for these dudes, and they only wait is basketball. So, so you're going to get your active guys that's playing the big three. They're going to go do that. Them the active NBA dudes. Them guys that's retired and not want to play basketball no more, they're going to they're gonna push them through this junior NBA – and then they're going to make them a lane for them to come up if, and find a way. So we have to right now dominate and get back to controlling what we can control, and that's AAU and these summer leagues, and making it right so they can get the exposure. Yeah, man, that was good. Definitely need to shorten on the league. That was a good one, right? Um, but uh, I don't think kids are going to stop playing AAU. I mean, you might have one or two kids so you know, they like, I don't need AAU. They might have their offers. They might not. They might just want to work on their game. Uh, but I just don't see kids, like, not playing AAU. Cause just to touch on what I was just saying, uh, there's been times we're playing a tournament, and they got four All-State dudes in their starting lineup. It's like, that's what coaches want to come see. They want to see the best versus the best. You know, a, a lot of times we have players who coaches will come out and see during high school and say, okay, we're not going to offer them. We like them, but we want to see, see them play AAU. What's the, I mean, a lot also, too, a lot of high school coaches, uh, college coaches will ask you, like, what AAU team do they play for? You know? So um, AAU will always be around. Um, in terms of the high school live, live period, I seen some games last year, not all the players played. They they picked and choose what game they wanted to play. And then also, if I'm not mistaken, Maryland Public Schools can't play. So that hurt dudes like Arano Polite. Imagine Arano Polite had two live periods with Oxen Hill. You know? He might I love George Mason, he might have went a little higher. You just never know. You know what I'm saying? So, like like Ray saying, you know, if we just bring it back here 
And, you know, we really trying to get it under two roofs because there's a league everywhere. And we're all yelling, there's not enough exposure. I remember going up to High Point, watching Rain and Boogie in the Rock League. I remember that. That's when you could get a Dematha versus Rose, a Dematha versus Blade, you know, a, a Gonzaga versus Gwen Park. It was easy to find. And it was a lot, a lot of coaches in there. We can get that back without subtracting anything. We don't have to subtract AU. We don't have to subtract uh, AU does need another live for it. But uh, without subtracting um, the high school live for it. And then also, too, think about the toll that we're putting on these kids' bodies. Like, especially kids playing at WCAC, right after Alhambra, 17-year practice. A month later, we, we on the road, we on a flight. Like, you know, we're supposed to go to Dallas this weekend. EYBL was supposed to go where they were going. They're going to play all the way through May. And then we expect them to play in June. And then like, now they got to play summer league, and then they had the pressure of, okay, I'm playing a full game, Monday through Thursday, high school summer league, and now, boom, now I got live for in front of coaches. Two straight weekends. Oh, and then, oh, we get a week off because, oh, it's 4th of July, but then, boom, now we'll be at Peace Gym. You know, so it's like, are we, they're playing a lot of basketball. We're going to have to pick and choose. Something's going to have to subtract. You know what I'm saying? Because at the end of the day, we are putting a toll on these kids. At the end of the day, they are kids. And that's what we're seeing when they get to the league, they're breaking down at like 21, 22, 23 years old. They don't have no body, you know, because not every kid can go get the – um the proper strength and conditioning, this and that third. They also, just a to touch on this high school library, I think they need to open it up to the public schools if they haven't already. I mean, shoot, last year, Darius Miles went to St. Charles. I had to put him on Rock Creek Christian just so he can play in, in the library because St. Charles couldn't bump. He was out there getting almost 20 a game. And I had to, I had to ask Lock, Lock, give me a favor, like, hey, man, please, please can he play with y'all. He put him on for the high school library. He was able to get more looks. Because some coaches who were watching him when he was at Roosevelt, they didn't know where he went because, you know, St. Charles is so far and they were newer, you know, so he had to get back on the scene. So that, that's, that's all I really got for right now. Yeah, for the, the, for the high school live players, for me, I think, I think they're great. But with AAU, I feel like they should not take away the sessions for it because at the end of the day, most of these kids need as much looks and love as possible to get themselves that platform in even with college coaches. A lot of these college coaches don't finish their classes off right after the AAU season. They go to September. So getting them as much looks as possible is important. But going back to what, uh, but going back to what I said to Coach O, back to the relationship part with high school and, and AAU coaches, the thing with AAU is it's so competitive with AAU and it's like college because you recruit the best high school kids and you all combine on one team. I kind of like wanted to see in the springtime what they learn from coming off the bench and not being a man in the, in the high school teams in the wintertime. So when they go back into the live periods for the high school events, I want to see if they learn from the tough AAU practice going up against the former players, the older teams and things like that, if they can dominate when they come back to their high schools. Um, it was a couple of kids I saw last year that did that. Uh, Keno Lilly, he opened it up in uh, with Landon. They didn't have as much talent as DC Premier, but every time them live periods came, he averaged about 30, 35. Um, who else? Uh, we didn't have a lot of period two years ago, but Lewis Tang, who played at St. Mary's right and nobody knew who Lewis Tang really was, but he played with the district. He didn't get the most playing time in the first, uh, the, in the spring session, but in summer league, he averaged about 20 and nine. So if they did have a lot of period at the time, he would have ate with a lot of division ones, but he did use everything he learned from AAU and dominated in high school. And that's the biggest thing of like live periods, giving these kids an the opportunity to dominate. And the last thing about it, I mean, let's, let's go to the team takeover Orange with Ronald Polite. I was joking with one of the coaches saying, Ronald Polite is probably the best guard, the best, the best guard period in this uh, summer league. One of the best guards. I was like, man, oh no. 30 points, six assists later against that private school. He was like, yeah, you're you right. I don't got no words about that. But the biggest thing is is them opening up those live periods to those public schools. I think it'll go hand in hand. But I don't think AAU is ever going to die. I mean, Ray brought up a great point with the junior NBA. But AAU, the high school, I don't think it ever die. I just think the relationships with those coaches need to be stronger. And I think it's strong here in this area anyways. But just that communication part. Because like I said, I done seen a lot of kids that did well in their AAU and come back into them. Live prayers and just look like a whole different player. I appreciate all the good insight. Um, definitely 
uh, we'll make sure that we take that into consideration. And I'm gonna pass the rock over to Coach uh, Chuck over at uh, uh, Fairmont. What's going on, fellas? So I'm gonna I'm I'm try to bring this all full circle for you guys and kind of uh, school you to a few things that have happened recently. Uh, there was a legislation that was brought forth by uh, a state senator up in Baltimore City, where they're going to allow us to play four additional games. And the way the way it's written is they're going to allow us to play four additional games every year, and you can decide whether you want to use those in the live period in the summer times or if you want to use them in your regular season. So they, they yeah, it's, it's really weird how they wrote it, but at this point it's just something that they got on the books just so that they say, all right, now it's new um, and gives us an opportunity to play in those live periods. Whereas, like, say, for instance, with me, uh, my Fairmont team, we don't have any seniors this year. So it, it's not really advantageous for us to play but maybe one session of it and then use the other two games to maybe play some some big time games during a regular season. You know, it's just one of those things that now it's, it's another chess piece for us, um, so to speak. Um, but here's my question, because I completely agree with you guys. I think the landscape of AAU is changing. I think it's, you know, it's, it can be a hybrid between what we used to have when we had the Rock League and we, had our AAU, we, I mean, we had the Rock League, and we had a Summer League, and then all of a sudden it morphed into this AAU structure. Me being a guy who played in Europe, I actually think we're going to go more to, towards that model. And I think, the, um, I think the Junior NBA is just a step forward towards that model because when I played in Germany, they had the Bundesliga, which is the main German league, and then they had the, uh, the Junior Bundesliga, which is – like basically AAU. Um, so my question to you guys is, um, how do you think with the one and done, which everybody kind of knows is coming, is going to be approved, how do you think the one and done is going to affect us, and where do you actually see AAU going from this? Well, I don't want to say AAU. Where do you see basketball going, and where do you see it developing? So I'm going a, I'm to a, I'm a, I'm a go roll on this one. I'm going to start with Oz. And then I'm gonna go Chuck, and then we're gonna we're gonna skip around a little bit. I want I want to hear from Oz and Chuck first, though. Uh, yeah, Coach. I mean, I, I think that one of done, man. I think it's due, man. I mean, just like any other thing, I think everybody should be. You know, if, if you decide you want to make, you know, you want to make a jump, it should be your decision, right? Nobody should control that, obviously. You got to talk to your family, make sure you're ready to make that move. But I don't think we should put a limit to what a family or kid can do in terms of the decision they make. We make decisions for everything else we do, but now we want to push. So I think that it'd be good because one, and I'll go deeper into that. When you look at the NCAA, let's be real, guys. Like kids are going there. We talking about them getting paid. They're not getting paid. But I tell you what, this coming, are they going to start throwing that money? And think about the, the, the stuff that's coming out now with the G League. So everybody is jumping in to find a way, okay, how they can monopolize what's going on. But now giving that option for them to leave, I'm good with that. But it goes back to what I said in the last com in the last question is I think with AAU in the position it is right now, it is going to come to a point where I'm telling you, I think it's going to be a, a thing where it might end up being year round because of that one and done and then I think Ray or somebody said it was like, well, now if you figure you play, you, you play against that level of competition, you don't necessarily need to play high school, right? You can train and just prepare for the league because just like what they do to Major League Baseball, you do with hockey and all these other sports, they can start drafting these kids right out of high school. And they sit them somewhere and then, you know, you go and play. Basketball is kind of one of the only ones that they don't do that to. So now you think about them opening that up. Why would a kid right now and, and look at uh, Isaiah Todd, what happened to him yesterday. He commits so he can go pro. So now he's skipping that college opportunity because now they want to make this process a lot quicker. So, you know, I'm, I don't have no issues with the one and done now. I think it's a decision if, if a kid is ready. Not all is going to be ready. I mean, some are taking chances. But who am I to say, if that's your dream, I think we just have to be smarter and wiser, you know, to, to kind of guide them through the process, to let them know what it looks like. 
but I think the opportunity of having pro leagues all over the place from, so if you don't make the league, you got the G League. If you don't do G League, you know, Chuck, you go overseas play. You know what I'm saying? And if you have some type of name within AAU or high school, like you're going to have opportunity to make money. So being a pro don't necessarily mean the NBA. You could be a pro in China playing overseas. That's being a pro, a pro playing G League. So I think with this opening up, man, I just think the NCAA is going to be the one that's hurt most because a lot of these kids, trust when I say it, man, you start throwing 500,000 to kids. You think about it, Chuck, you had that opportunity when you got done. they like, hey, 500,000. Like, why wouldn't you look at that? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, Absolutely. you got to look at it because now our grind was different because they didn't have to tell you to go work on your game. You did it. But these youngers, the reason they're not sticking, they, they get caught up in the fame and stuff, and they don't keep that, they don't work. But if you had the same opportunities the youngers got now, you, you play 10 years in the league. You see what I'm saying? So, I, I, again, no issues with it, man. Um, I think it's, it's well overdue because all the other sports do it. But I think at some point it is. It'll be AAU kind of, and, and it's, it, it sounds crazy, fellas, but I'm telling you, I just think that's the route where you start giving these type of players opportunities to make a decision. They could say, I mean, look, look what we're doing now. They, they um, going through Zoom to take online classes. You see what I'm saying? So now not even having to show up in school, obviously this is a, a circumstance, a situation we're in, but I think this might even be the way that, you know, the future might hold where work could be done at home. I mean, we've already been homeschooling kids, so we shouldn't be surprised if things start implementing little by little to make this where, you know, I can see a lot of change happening, but I'm all for it, man. Okay. Sure. Uh, yeah, just to uh, piggyback on what I was just saying, um, definitely for um, the, the the subtraction of the that rule, man. Kids, when you turn 18, you can get drafted MLB. Some 17-year-olds, 16-year-olds, you go play soccer, MLS, NHL, but um, in basketball, you got to wait till you're one, one year removed from high school. You know, what if a kid reclass? What if that kid's graduating at 19? So now you're telling them, oh, he can't go, he has to go at 20. What if the kid gets hurt? You know, maybe that was his shot to, to get to the league. And now you talk about the G League. You're going to have a lot of top players like, I don't want to go to college. I go to, if I go to college, I might get exposed. I, I might as well go to the G League, get exposed. They know I'm going to get exposed anyway. I'm a younger kid. I might, the only thing I say is I'm not as strong. But after a, good NBA, after a good year of NBA summer, you know what I'm saying, of strength and conditioning, I'll be ready. But in the day, you'll still get a check too, 500000 and now you're seeing a lot of smart kids, a lot of kids going overseas like a LaMelo ball, LaMelo ball. It works out for them. Kids seen that. You know, they're talking about um, how, he, I don't know if it's true, but, you know, he bought, he bought his team. He was able to, he was able to invest in his, his team that he played for. Kids are seeing that. Kids talk. The world is small now. Social media. They're talking all the time. I'm sure if it didn't come out, I'm sure Jalen Green going to say he's not going to, going to college either. He's going straight to the league. And, and to touch on what Oz is saying, I can see AAU becoming year-round because what, what's going to happen is you're going to want to play, play against the best to get your draft stock up, okay? Fortunate enough, you see the WCAC and stuff like that, you know, they're playing like Gonzaga will play Carroll and Carroll will play the math and every night is bumped. Every night is bumped. So coaches will be there to watch, you know? But what if you're not in that position to have bump every night, you know? Now it's like, on. Oh, do I, do I go to prep school, just work on my game? Because my whole dream is to be a pro. And like I said, pro doesn't just mean NBA. Maybe you have enough time to go overseas. Maybe, you know, so a team in Italy is like, look, I got 200000 for you to come over here to play play right now. It's 18, bro. We all take 200000 Go go do something that we love to do. So I, I, I'm i all for doing away with the rule. It's really going to hurt the NCAA. I'm not going to lie. We're not going to see these A-plus, A-level players really – I don't think they're really going to consider college anymore. Uh, a lot of these top teams are, are, might, might got to get a four-star or, or low-level five-star recruit to go to these Dukes and these Kentuckys. But I just feel like it's their choice, you know. Like, it, when they turn 18 and they graduate high school, they have the option, do they want to go to college, right? You go to college, why? To better, better prepare yourself to get a job in the future. That's what they say. So if you can get a job at 18 already, and it's playing basketball, something that you love, I don't knock it. I think you should do it. So that's what I got. Gotcha. Okay, so this is the reason why I split you guys up. I kind of wanted to look at it from more of an administrative 
directive role with you two guys just because you got a lot more hands-on uh, experience in terms of doing the day-to-day -day operations of an organization. All right, so I want to flip the script a little bit because I know the two guys that I got coming up next are very deep into the development aspect. I know you guys do a lot of development too, but I know Chris and I know I know Ray, and they do a lot of the hands-on development of the kids uh, on a day-to-day -day aspect. So the one and one, one and done rule. Same same sort of question for for Chris and um and Ray, uh, but I want to take it from a different perspective. How do you think? this affects a kid in terms of his development, individual development, where a guy's going to start to lean towards, especially if this starts to morph where maybe AAU gets phased out and we got, it, it, it starts to look like it's NBA, G League, uh, junior NBA, overseas, and then high school is really just an ex extracurricular activity because honestly, that's where it looks like it's trending towards. So from a development standpoint, how do you two guys adjust? I'll take Chris first. Okay. Um, well, I mean, for me, I mean, well, obviously, I agree with the one and done. Um, I do, but far as development, I mean, it just you know, some guys now going, we want to. Some guys are going to work on what they see in the pros, and they're going to want to do like, well, I got to do all these hard and curry. I need to work on stuff like that. Um, so development is going to be a little different, you know, especially guys coming to gym want to work on different things uh, as far as, like, you know, just all NBA pro stuff. Um, but for me, I, it's the same, man. Just we just got to work. We're going to stay in the gym. We're going to work. All right? Everybody can't be a pro. That's going to be my main thing telling them. You know, you don't come in and think, well, I'm, everybody want to leave. Well, I'm, I got to work. So I got to – we're not going to do that. We're going to put our same effort in the gym. We're going to work what we've been doing. If you go pro, we go college. Or we, Division two, Division three doesn't matter. We're going to put that same amount of work in. Um, so, like, the one and done, I mean, just, you know, it, it has to happen. Though. You know, it has to, you know, guys going to school, college just for one. They're not even doing no schoolwork problem. You know, it's just – so, if you want to get paid at 18, you, you need to do it. And, you know, I know Ray can get on a little bit more, but as far as, you know, me working these guys, it's going to be the same thing. My, my, my model doesn't change. We humble, we humble. We're going to stay in that gym. We're going to work going to do what we got to do to get you to that next level. You know, uh, so that's what I got. <clears throat> um, uh, far as the one and done, I'm with it. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm with it because I'm, I'm all about getting people out the way. If they don't want to be there, don't be there. You know, and I'm just – because that's, that's, that's a waste of it's, – it's bad energy. When you somewhere you don't want to be, that's bad energy. So yeah. bad energy brings just so much more of a chaos from a college coach, the campus, whatever it is. So a lot of these dudes and today they already going in the mindset of not liking school. I'm one of them. I went to Roosevelt every day because I knew at the end of the day, I wanted to practice. It wasn't no, and it's not that a kid can't do it or not do it, but this is just the reality of it. You know what I'm saying? That's the reality of today's like, and I'm, I'm, and I, I heard Coach Oz talk about the school and changing. I'm with that because today kids work better off visual, visual, visual work. They don't, they're not good with sitting in there reading a book and all that. Is is it, it? They they not. No knock on it. They just, I think everything is changing. You know, and I, like I said, I'm with the one and done. The dudes that don't want to be, that want to go, go. If you, don't, if you think you need a year, you need a year, do the year. You know what I mean? So I'm, I'm not, I never, I will never, I ain't, I'm never against somebody changing their lifestyle. I, 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 I'm not. Like, that's, that's, you, I never turn on somebody to turn down some money or, 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 or bet on yourself and, and believe that. You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> uh, from a, hello? Oh, yeah. from a, um, from a, from a training standpoint, Chuck, outside of, we all could wake up and know who a pro. Like just like you like there's certain dudes you just know a pro. But it's not that many. So let's let's when I when I say this, let's take them away. Nothing changes because you ask a kid, you can ask, what is a pro? What do a pro look like? What equals a pro? Far as the ones that's when we talk about not the ones we just know. What makes a pro? Me and Oz been talking about this for so long, even when I was in high school. 
you can't get away from the work, the word work. <laughs> you have to work. You have to work. So to give, even give yourself a chance to be a comp, to even give yourself a chance to be a pro, you got to work. It's, it's, it's nothing else. Now, do we need, we need some luck? Do we need right timing? Yeah, we need all that. And all that, but far as are we going to change a, a regiment? Only way I'm going to change a regiment, uh, uh, Chuck, if the agent coming in and pay me a bag, that's why I'm going to change it. Because <laughs> that's, that's the only way it's going to have to change. Okay. Other than that, we're going we gonna, to we gonna work. We're going to work. And I'm sure, again, Coach Oz's brother was a pro. He, he know what a pro look like. He, he, and guess what? Out for work. So if you go to ask Coach Oz, hey, Coach Oz, what a pro look like? Man, you got to go work. John, why, John on here, Desmond, uh oh, they know what a pro looked like. Wally was a pro. It's just certain things didn't go that way, but reality, we know what he did. He decided to put the work in. So when you so when you say I'm gonna put my head down and put work in, those you're gonna get closer to those results. So and like I tell people, even the dudes that's in the NBA today, you keep your job from working. You don't keep your job just because you did. You either keep your job or lose your job from working. And that's and that's a kid that's trying to not even that's a kid that's trying to be a first team on Met. That's a kid that's trying to be a college basketball player, any level. You have to work. So my thing is we'll never be able to get away from, from that, from that, from that word right there, work. So if you don't work, you ain't you ain't gonna make it far. That's in anything. Okay. You know, so I think. I think to be a to, in the work like a pro, you gotta it's a, it's some sacrifice you gotta make, you gotta take, and that's gonna be the that's my biggest question when it go back to coming out of high school. How many of these kids really gonna do the pro things? See, because everybody wanna be a pro or everybody wanna be a coach or whatever it is. Are do you know or are you willing to do the things to be the best at that? So a lot of people just think being a pro or just going in the gym. Now, I'm going to go in the gym and get shots up, work on my skill. No, nah, you got to go home and eat, right? You got to get good sleep. Like, it's a pro It's a pro regimen. Like, it's a regimen to be a pro. You know what I mean? You got to respect your body. You got to respect, you know what I mean? You got to be mentally strong enough to tell your boy, no, nah, I ain't nothing. I ain't doing it. Like, it's a lot to come with being a pro that's, self, that's more self than, than anybody else. So I, I think that's gonna be the I think that's gonna be the toughest challenge of getting today's generation, 18 year olds that's been pushed at the level and not worked at the level. It's gonna be it's it's gonna be it's gonna be really tough because these kids now, it's not a lot of them, a lot of them got pro attributes and pro ability, but they don't have that work ethic and, yeah. and grit to actually like I tell people. Do you want to be an NBA? Do you want to be a? Do you want to be an NBA player, or do you want to be an NBA longevity guy? It's a difference. Because all, a lot of kids are talented enough to go get drafted or make or play in the NBA, but are you good enough to stay there and make it and make it a? Or are you good enough to stay overseas? People don't realize overseas harder than the NBA at, to right. to certain levels Still because two practices a day. <laughs> because when you go over there, Chuck, and you know, and Oz know as an American. If you can't put that basketball in the hole, you're coming home. Facts. There's no if, ands, what's, what's about it. And there's guys that we know that's been college All-Americans, NBA dudes, and went over there, and because they lost their work ethic, they lost their job. So, man, the biggest thing, man, is, is you know, and we, man, I was laughing at all the time. We talk about all the levels we didn't been at. And we always, every time we talk and it comes back to, I love, love you, man, keep working. Love you, man, keep working. You have to work. Man, oh, talk. Oh, start. We talk, have fun. Get off the phone. Hey, man, keep working. Like, like, like that has to be the, that's the, that's the concrete of this thing, man. Work, work, work. And I think, again, Chuck, honestly, shit going to be harder for us. Because now everybody's going to want to come out of, out of high school. And now they're going to look at me and a Chris a Keith Williams, a, a, a Shavis, a, you know, they're going to look at all of us now and they think we're supposed to really make a miracle in a couple months. 
Right. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> to where this thing is day by day, hours by like you mean it's just yeah. it's yeah. a constant yeah. grind, yeah. man. And, and you know, and like I've been blessed, you know what I mean? Blessed and fortunate enough to even see pros, be around it, understand it. And man, and again, like I just tell people like we're blessed right now that Kevin Durant is arguably the best player in the world, and Victor Oladipo is arguably one of the best players in the NBA. These two dudes are from our backyard. I tell people all the time, one thing I've watched them do, and if nothing else, man, they are the hardest working individuals I've ever seen. And I'm talking about, you can go in there and tell them, look, we're just going to go rip through one dribble pull-up. Man, they're going to do a rip through one dribble pull-up 100 times, but at 100 miles per hour every time. And so now one of Kevin's slogans is, it ain't no defense. And it's not because there's no respect to the guy. But it's the fact that I've went in here and did this every time. So I know I'm going to get there. But then you get a kid to come to us like, hey, coach, man, why I can't get there and get to my jump shot? Well, when we in practice and I'm telling you, you know, you're doing a shadow by yourself, you have, you just going through the motions. So now when the game time come, I can't get to that shot. So the biggest, the biggest thing going to be, Chuck, is making them, making them lift up their they level of work. Are they going? Are they going? Are they going to match that that intensity to give themselves a chance to go do that? No, that's real. That's real, man. I appreciate all you guys' insight up to you know the future of basketball, man. But to, to back up, Ray, I, I absolutely agree with you because I was one of them dudes that took some some guys who played in the league jobs when I played overseas. I took a bunch of Division One dude jobs. Because I came over and I worked. And them dudes, when we were supposed to be at the gym, practice twice a day. I don't think a lot of guys prepare for that, man. Yeah. You got to go over there. You practicing twice a day, every day. You got practice on the game day. Like, that threw me off the first time. Yeah. 8 a.m. practice, and we got a game at 6 p.m. <laughs> yeah, so, nah, that's that's real, man. So, I'm, I'm going to pass it back over to O. I think, I think we're going to wrap, wrap this whole thing up, man. But. Appreciate all you guys jumping on this on the call today, man. A lot of great dudes, man. Love all you guys, man. Like Ray said, man, let's make sure we continue to work. Yes, sir. Likewise. Work is, work is key. Hey, fellas, you know, we, I want to say thank you on the behalf of the Dry, dry Race Board panel, man. Uh, all the coaches that we decided to do this thing is because, you know, we was bored, for one. Two, we in the house. Uh, but during these times, People being bored or have nothing to do is a great time, you know, for to get your mind together, spend time with your family, and actually talk hoops. So the last thing we're gonna close out with, we're gonna do about five or six minutes of this overtime. Summer league, this is summer league overtime, right? This ain't a regular season overtime. It's been a lot of talks on the internet on Instagram. <laughs> I wanna thank out. I wanna thank my man uh Quinn Cook, man, for bringing it up because it's, it's much needed talk. Because one thing I know about the DMV coming up here from North Carolina, there's a lot of people. But the circle is small. But I, we want to close out with something special. And we're just going to add another five or six-minute piece to this. And I want y'all to speak on how the players in the DMV, mainly Prince George's County, public, private, whatever may have you, and I want y'all to start bringing some names up. There's some of them names that was left off them conversations. And we're going to give you guys the platform and the panel to actually talk about some of those people that some of our young folks, like Chuck said and like Shilape said, our young folks don't get to hear their names off of the guys that we witnessed and saw what they did. So the floor is yours. You name it just a few, we just, or just, we just throwing names. Oh, we just throwing names? Yeah, we just throwing names, coach. Oh, you muted, man. We can't hear you. Yeah, you muted. We just throwing names. Uh, I said, yeah, you be just throwing names. Uh, names that come to mind for me. I mean, my area, I had to play against the Gwyn Park dudes, man. They, when we went to the Rapid Team Camp, they was loaded from top to bottom every year. You know, so just some names that might have not been mentioned that we're going to throw out the Well, base. I'm going to go. I'm going to go because everybody probably going to do something. I'm going to go. I'm going to go high point, man, the Twins. 
the twins and the point guard, Theron George, that, you know, a lot of people don't – nobody talk about. Nobody. And I always know them dudes at that high point. Them, them <laughs> twins – them twins was 6'7". Yes, and oh, was yeah. a real, oh, yeah. real problem. And the kid named Theron George and Tim Trelesky that nobody talk about who started Capitol Hoops could really, really flat out shoot the cover off the basketball. Like, like high point was a top four team in the league at one time in, 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 yep. in PG County. Like, and they, they was beating everybody. They, matter of fact, they beat us that year. They did. Like, them they twins, did. Was, them twins was, was probably the – they was really good. They was re- yeah. they was on that level with Chris Prince, Chris Williams, that nobody talking about them two when Oxen Hill went 27-0 before losing us. They was top 15 in the country that year. They beat Sebastian Taylor for that. You know what I mean? So, Demario Anderson. Like, these dudes was mid-major players, but was, man, golly. Like, really, really good. You know what I mean? But I'll let some else keep on, too, though. Uh, uh, some of the players that I – off the top of my head that I didn't hear, I'm going to just I'm just go to PG County straight. Um, Sterling Ledbetter, uh, Laurel, played at the University of Maryland, um, big point guard. Uh, Jock Vaughn, played at uh, George Mason, you know, Laurel mm-hmm. High School. Athletic wing, I think, I think a lot of the kids in the area, we got a lot of talented wings in our area, but they don't play hard. <laughs> they just look good in warm-up lines, but I didn't see <laughs> some games where we go up against six, seven wings, and you put a six-one guard on them, and you put a little bit of pressure, it's over, because they don't want to, you know, go hard or post up or get rebounds and things of that nature. Uh, hey, Lope, not to cut you off, but yeah. my God. You named a hell of a backcourt with that Sterling Ledbetter and John Vaughn. Good. Oh my God. Hey, oh, hey, look, hey, man. hey, wait, wait. Man. Hey, I just had a flashback. I just had a flashback. <laughs> yeah. I look back now, I don't even I think I don't even know how we won in some of them games. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> man, go ahead, keep on, bro. Woof. Man. Uh, another Jeez. one. I mean, they ain't mentioned his name once, but Ray just mentioned his name was Wally. His time hey, at he had um he he had y'all bumping. I mean, Lade always had a great program, but to see what he did was was crazy. Another one who play, oh this one played in WCAC, but I call this WCAC team an uh, extension of PG County to DCIAA, which is Carroll and Jamar Samuels. Ray played yeah. with him. Uh, yeah. Inside out threat played like a straight goon. I think more people need to watch players such as that. Uh, another one was uh, Jason Clark. Uh, a lot of point mm. guys learn how to pick full court like he did. You know what I'm saying? Distribute the basketball. I mean, I grow – I mean, as a coach, I grow with appreciation now. So, two of my favorite point guards watching, and they were both WCAC kids, was uh, one, Kevin Dorsey. I mean, he ain't get the college career because of crazy things that happen. But the way he played, though – Hey, 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 Ray Boo, you know what that is with Kevin Dorsey, Slim. Yeah. Any day, yeah. any Kevin, day. <laughs> Kevin Dorsey. And as I grew older as a coach, I like efficiency. So Kendall Marshall as a point guard, I'm just talking about point guard attributes. It just makes yeah. him read. Your the most sexiest. But just getting the ball ahead, keeping his eyes up, things of that nature was great. And then I'm going to go, like, I'm from Lanham. So another player that made it, but he wasn't super big. But like I said, those wing forward positions, they need to watch. Playing inside and out was uh, Colin Betty at Duval High School. Uh, strong, six five, inside out player that had a great career. Yeah, man. Uh, like, oh, I'm gonna. T- oh, I'm, I'm. I'm just going back when I grew up. Glenn on watching. Like, oh, probably know this name, man. You got Jermaine Green, Dematha. No way <laughs> talk about him. Uh, who are, my guy who I'm really close. Uh, Ray probably know him. Freddie Stanback. Man, it was a problem. He was my tough. Goodness. Freddie Stanback was a problem, Slim. Uh, I had a guy who just hold my crib, Big Brian Johnson. He went to O'Connell. Came down from Carolina, though. Um, even in my class, Chuck, no. Chris Tolson from Laurel was a, he was tough. That was a tough matchup for me. Was, he was tough. Nah, nah, Chris Tolson. That whole Laurel mob was tough. You had Darren Clark at Largo, who was tough. Um, Big Mo Sutton at Largo. Uh, man, it's just man, this area crazy, man. It's just, it's just too many to name, man. I know, I know Chuck got a lot, man. Nah, y'all really named a, a lot of my dudes, what? man. Um, 
My dudes I, I played against, as I can name, Donnell Dawson was tough. I don't feel like he got enough credit in that one. I mean, remember him coming over giving us 40-something. Crazy. Oh, my God. He was, uh, hey. he was nasty. Oh, my God. Yeah. God rest my man. So, Eric Henderson, I remember Ooh. him walking in the gym hey. in the middle he of the second quarter against 35. Like, oh, my God. I remember that. Oh, boy. That boy yeah. was crazy. Yeah. He was crazy. And, he was and, and crazy. One of my toughest texts, I, I was a young boy, but I was, I was, I like Mike Lewis. Like, Mike yeah. Lewis was tough to me. Like, yes. coming over half court, like, letting that thing go. Um, yes. But then, yes. then I, uh, I mean, you know, I noticed somebody said Kendall Marshall, so I guess we crossing the border. I grew up in the city so before I moved to Merlin, so I had love that Cardoza team with Lester and Antonio. That backcourt, mm. they played them after every single year in the city championship, and nobody was doing nothing with both of them. So, so, so those are some of my, those are some of my favorites. I mean, we go on and on to this hoop yeah. was all around. But, um, yeah, those, those are definitely some of my favorites. Yeah. Hey man, y'all, y'all, y'all done took everybody I was going, man. My goodness, like, hey, it, it's, hey, hey, oh, it's, 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 it's tough, man. But I, I think guys, the, the sleepers that I saw, like the Donnells, the Jock Bond, these guys, man. And, and I'll tell y'all, and Ray, you remember, even we talking about it now, even Lamar Butler, uh, you know, the Oxford Hill mob, man. Like, 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 when you live in the field, guys, guys together, man, it was, it was amazing. <laughs> Like I mean, it is, and I to piggyback on I mean, that. I to piggyback on that for you now, no Jack. Like I think Lamar Phil really got to get more respect because them dudes went to the state championship four straight years. No, yeah. right. no, they, got they went, they went four straight years, and then they won their last one. But yo, that ain't heard of, man. Nah, dudes going to nah. four straight state titles. Not, not in the four A. That was in, the, in its heyday. Like that was a. That and, was and, a and I'm talking about. And I'm talking about Phil and Lamar. I was at Newport, and I watched them rip Gil Goodrich and T.J. Thompson a new hole one time, Slim. And I'm like, whoa. And, and, and Chuck, and Chuck, the funny thing is, them years, man, like, we we always had a good mob, man, but that Oxford Hill mob, like, we, we I think we game plan. When the season started, it was all Oxford Hill. We worried about nobody else. Like, that's how loaded. And then you had a big fella back there, obviously, man, but. Nah, I do, man. I think that this area, when we talk about it, man, the talent is at that real, man. And that's all we got to keep doing, man. Just kind of keep sharing this with these kids, man. And a lot, I kind of like what you say y'all do, kind of show old tape. Because at one point, I had to tell a lot of kids when I was coaching, they was asking about Ray. And I was like, man, you know, his intensity is funny. Because if I tell y'all the amount of fights I had to break up in practice, because the energy like that Ray bought and the demand, what he demanded of guys, like when those guys, and again, it started with guys before him that come in and be like, man, listen, like when my brother used to come in the gym, like Ray and them want to play, and he's like, when he's playing them, he's playing them as if they're pros. Like, nah, I'm not, you're not a high school young. You want to step in between these lines, I'm going to treat you like a pro. You know what I'm saying? So now it just kind of translates. You got the line set, you got Eddie and these guys. So, when you tell guys, it's always good to us to, to take these guys back and say, man, listen, these guys played at a high level. Now, again, y'all generation is easy, but the perfect word we use all the time, like you said, is this work, man. To get there, you can't, you can't shy. You can't shy away from them. When they lift this thing up, you know who been putting in the work, who has it, man. So it was actually a pleasure, man, being on here with you fellas, man. Look, anything I can ever do for y'all, man, is all love, man. You know, I'm, I'm a phone call away, man. Look. Look forward to see you guys continue to grow. I need a lap. And Ray, they were trying to act like you ain't played six games and win the state championship, Joe. They try <laughs> your freshman year. They try to act like you ain't just played six games. They go win that thing. Slip. <laughs> I remember trap, being man. at that game. Joe, my cousin was Matt Queen. I was at the game. Slip. Yeah. Yeah, they was faking. I didn't, I didn't hey, Chuck, that. But that's why, but that's why it's good just to have these. You know what I'm saying? It's good to have these because you know you need these round talks. You know what I'm saying? You need them. Like I yeah. mean, like and I'm and like I'm to the point. I'm so happy and passionate. Like, bro, I tripled down. Like, even used to compete with John and Desmond in practice. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, I came back and it got to that point. You know what I mean? And to, to even see them go do what they doing is like, man. It is like this love, man. It's, it's and that's what it's about. You know what I'm yeah. saying? And again, I it was what it was with me. We know, like you gonna hate me more than you love me, but you're gonna love me when it's over with. And I'm cool. Hey, with 
Hey, when they was talking crazy about you on live, Ray, I was, I was like, they, they must be. They didn't know. The fuck. I was like, they trapped. Oh, nah, hold on. Hey, hold on. Hey, listen, I, hey, didn't, I didn't. Hey, that I was to get a rise out of Ray, head, man. So, hold on. They, 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 they threw you out there, son? They threw you out there? They was disrespectful, son. Like, they, 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 they was definitely tripping. And I was glad Wax got on that jail, like, what? Like, <laughs> crazy. <laughs> hey, 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 Ray, I hey, 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 oh, I tell him like this. I could name a few games, few arenas we locked in. I called them like the Lagos, the Sioux and Slim. Ray came to Boogie. I mean, there's one on, you know what I'm saying? Like, you, you see guys, you know, like take, take control of situations, man. But it is, man. I mean, we got a lot of guys, and I think the respect, it, it, it's the lack of respect right now, man, that you would just throw guys out there and say, Guys weren't built for this when the air is actually different. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. but it's what it is, man. If you don't know what's understood, don't need to be explained, man. You know what I'm saying? Right, Uh, some names, man. I can't let the, the, the five and nine crew get out, get out my head with Israel and nowhere. That's the smallest backcourt. In PG County, that was you know doing things. We had John, and I know I'm a Blazeburg guy. I go on and on. Those guys that success went from not right to top on the area. You know, what I mean? got guys that I look up to like Joe Holmes. Play football. You got you got uh, Alpha Band. Roosevelt, and he happened to be playing. He caught the first hoop off the tip. You know, that's <laughs> Basketball was real. <laughs> you know what I mean? So you had guys like Joe Loft, you know what I mean? Kershaw and Flood. Yes, and so Joe Loft at Fawnsville High School. And, and, and Bam, don't forget Bam. Don't forget Bam was on that. I ain't gonna forget Bam at all. And then you had guys like Rob Diggs over at Grim Pop. Yeah. Yeah, he was Sir Valiant Brown, man. So Cornbread. Like, say that one. It's definitely a lot of guys, man. But I think, like what Ray said, the biggest thing is that you're able to talk about and discuss it without it being no feelings. Because at the end of the day, like Chuck always say, Chuck Henry always says everything so subjective. But it's a good conversation piece because what happens is we get oh, oh, into oh, that oh. oh man, he so, got boost mobile. They don't do no research. This ain't for us. This for God, kids that's after us so they can know and now they can tell a story correctly. You know what I mean? That's the biggest piece. Like Shalab been saying, these kids don't do no research. And they got the swap phones all day long. They can look up whatever they want to look up. But if it's not on a Twitter line, if it's not on an Instagram post, they not going to know nothing about it. So that's why these discussions is important. So when I first came into the DMV, I can learn more about Prince George's County Hoops, public, private, guys that came before me. You know what I mean? History is very important. We do these discussions not amongst ourselves, but so these kids can actually have something to hold on to 15, 20 years from now. So, man, I definitely appreciate you guys, man. Thanks, Oz, for coming on last minute. I appreciate you, man, taking time out your day, you know, and everybody that's on the panel. On the, uh... so All good, I appreciate you. Appreciate y'all, man. Y'all stay safe, man. Job, man. man. Yeah, no doubt, no doubt. All, All right, right family. Y'all know y'all can hit me anytime. Anytime, yeah, baby. Sure. <laughs> stay safe, stay safe, man. All yes, sir. Right. Yes, sir. 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 Yes, all my dogs is down for war, you can tell how they train. Coaches, coach, and pay his play, but they learn from each other. If the roles are right, they take the kid, we assist one another. Making strides for a ship in the season. Lacing up these types of band of brothers, turning into some demons. Through the season, spring to fall, we gon' see who was working. When the winter hit the surface, gon' see who deserve it. Left competition in the dust, now the options deserted. Only lines in my circle, we hungry for purpose. Nothing's